All right, what's up, guys? Today, uh, my guest is a hilarious comic, uh, but much more than hilarious. He's very thought-provoking, very dark, very, very smart. Uh, he's also a great writer and uh, a burgeoning actor. Would you say burgeoning? Burgeoning, yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, please welcome BS, comedian, but as we know him, Brian Simpson. Dude. Thanks, man. Did I leave anything out? Nope, nope, that's it. That's all I am. Um, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to tell you what I wanted to talk to you today, but I wanted you to finish our conversation off camera because you were, like, digging the man cave. No, no, this is dope, man. Because I, I, I forgot, I, you know, it's easy. Like I was saying, you got the perfect level of fame where it's like, you're not so famous that you can't walk down the street anywhere. Take it down. But you're, but you're famous enough where you will, Always work until you die, like Betty White. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope so. I like that. Yeah, that's it. The Betty White type of fame. I always equate my fame as like I'm like a, like a, like a, a a, a seven at Trader Joe's in the Valley, like a woman. Oh yeah. yeah. I like I'm a, a hot seven. See, I, I, that's I, about to, I get. Bothered. I think of it like um, I think of it like distance, right? Where yeah. it's like Michael Jackson is famous from up the street. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then and what you want is when people get about this close, they go, You Jamie Kennedy. <laughs> right? What you don't want is for people to walk for you to walk past somebody and they go, Was that Jim, was that Jamie? <laughs> right? Cause that that's when you know your shit is downhill. But as soon as long as you can get that recognition right here, that's it, what you want right there. That's so good. Distance fame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we really don't know each other. No, not really. I think we, we just we met a few times, uh yeah. Been on a few shows or something. Yeah, but I think that you are, you just are amazing and you have this voice and I want to ask you questions about yourself if that's cool. Yeah, 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 And then I think that you really, really go in on a lot of things. You were doing, so we're doing Ari's show or something in this living room and you were talking about the drug laws and I was like, that is so smart. You had a whole drug law bit. And then I've been following your gram, and the, some of the stuff you've been saying is, like, incredible. But before I get into that, I want to ask you, so how long have you been doing stand-up? Um, it's, it'll be exactly 10 years next week. 10 years? Wow. Okay, where are you from? I'm originally from uh, the DMV, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, that area. Okay. Um, and, uh, but I started stand-up in San Diego. I saw that because you were military. Right, right, right. Thank you for your service. Thanks. I always tell people, well, you're Marines, right? Yeah, yeah. I always tell people that probably the most gratifying gig I ever did was in Baghdad. Really? Yeah. So I went over there and the Bill Dawes, you know who that is? Yeah. He was opening for me. And then Paul Wall, the rapper. What? Yeah, we had a comedy rap show and my partner, Stu Stone, is like a rapper and a comedian. And we get off, we go to to uh, Kuwait, which is kind of like Beverly Hills. And then that, we chilled there for a night. It was pretty low key. Then we go into Baghdad in the zone. It's a whole other world. Yeah. And we get off and I had these dudes just get off and they go, fucking these built, young, totally respectful Men and women, but men picked us up right out of the fucking chopper. And they go, thank God you're here, man. Fucking yeah. Pamela Ann's just canceled the fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and like it was us and the Buffalo Jills, which is the chill, the, chill, the cheerleaders for the Bills. Oh, wow. And like, they were so grateful that we were there. And dude, I was like crying. And we would do shows in the back of trucks. We would do shows in halls. We would do shows in the fields. Pop up, tons of. We'd always hear bombs. Then we'd have to stop, let it pass, continue the show, and I did that for a week. Yeah, I, I think uh, Marines are the best. Marines are probably the second best crowd. Next to it's like prisoners. I'm talking about just as far as, far as like being grateful. You know what I mean? Marines and then prisoners. And then, like, Narcotics Anonymous. Like, like those kind of groups. So like people, <laughs> you know, just, just people that have seen some dark shit like, yeah. for long periods of time. 
they're just so grateful to ha- to not have to think about that shit for a little while. Yeah. Now you're you're 38. Yeah, I'm 38. Yeah. Now what? What? So you were in for? I thought you were in for 20 years or no? No, no, no. I was 10 in years? Five years. Five, five years. years. Yeah, I was in for five years. Then I was lost for five years, and then I started doing comedy. Some of the greatest. So some of the greatest insights about. The, the world and really the military I get from doing those shows. Is that you? I thought you farted. I was like, well. Uh, we can dig it. Let me turn that shit off. Hold on. What kind of phone is that, bro? It's a Note 20. That's, okay. Yeah. It's like a good brick. I get, uh, the sh- I like Baghdad, and I did a couple USO tours, and then I did tours here in America. And I always feel it's the most, the most respectful people. And also, I feel because I know some Israeli women, mm. and having to do time over there, what they all have to go into the army, I, it shows me how much the military really. Everybody kind of needs a stint. I'd like to get your opinion, but I feel like. I learned so much about what's really going on, and you guys don't say it or can't say it. Some of these guys that are in for 20 years really can't say this shit because they'll lose their pension. See, I don't know if it's the military exactly. I think I think you should, before you can vote, you should have to do at least either either two years in the military or four years making minimum wage. Yeah. Then you can vote. You know what I mean? It's, it's got to be something where you where you feel invested, where you s- sacrifice something. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. Because you have to see what is really going on. Like over there, we stayed. Did you do time over there? Yeah, yeah I went over there twice. Yeah. You did two tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't a grunt, so I, you know, it's like what you what you what you imagined when you say that is not what my job. I was a technician. You know what I mean? I never had to like. I was never on the front lines or nothing like that. Okay. Yeah. So we we only got we only got shelled. We never got shot at. Like we only got those the, the these RPGs over the gate like every few days or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But we were never none of my none of my platoon died or anything like that. At least not there. Wow. Yeah. And we had people. We had a guy kill himself right when we got back. Really. But for for some reason, man, it's real high. The the veteran suicides, I, and, and you know, I, I can't, and I can't quite put my finger on, on why that is, you know. But I think maybe it has a lot to do with the fact that, like, they're not, in, they're not encouraged to give voice to like their mental health sh- struggles. At least not when I was in. Apparently, from you know, because I still have friends that are in, you know, and it's like, apparently things are much more different now and much more sensitive. But I can't imagine by too much. I would think it was because they're PTSD. Um, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I think that's that's what it is for some people. But I think some, because because you got to think about it like this: Where does the military pull from? For the most part, it's poor people that you know what I'm saying is like a large percentage of people go into the military already a little fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so whether it's PTSD or whether it's you know night terrors or major depressive, you know, it's like, it's just going to exacerbate those problems, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, like they, a hundred percent, like they say fame doesn't make you worse. It just shows you who you really are. Good or bad. I mean, it's obviously a lot different than fame, but seeing the military, one of the things I noticed about it, it was literally like, I see a dude from like backwoods, Mississippi, and a dude from Compton, and they're both just in the same platoon, laughing, getting along, understanding the world, and both for a common cause and also seeing a lot of the bullshit, the conversations I had, and with young women. So it was a fucking super eye-opening experience for me. And it was, you're right, like people that were like, this was their only shot. And they're the most respectful. I think a lot lot of people too is like, it, that being in that situation kind of forces you to put a bunch of things in 
prioritize a bunch of things in front of your bullshit. Your bullshit, right? But then when you're out, and you know, and, and so this identity that wasn't really yours is gone, and this purpose that is now someone else's is gone. And I think a lot of people have a hard time adjusting to that, you know. There is because there's something, even though I would never go back in the military, you know, but but there is something I miss about the simplicity of it, you know, of every single day knowing exactly what I was doing, where I needed to be, when I needed to be there, you know, and, and there was never a mystery to it. It was always exactly given to me, you know, my purpose every day. You had the structure. Right. And now that's gone. <laughs> you know, it's like I have to make my own structure, which I've never really been good at. So wait, what is your, you're from D.C. Right. And why did you become a comic? I mean, I, I have my reasons, but. Why did I become a comic? Yeah. And tell me if the people ask these questions too much. Um, no, I mean, I, get, I guess I get that question quite a bit. I mean, never quite put like that, but. Uh, well, I mean, here you are. You're from D.C., yeah, I think you when I went think, to the army, and then yeah. you said you were lost. Yeah, in the in the military, that was the one thing that people kept saying. You you should be a comedy. You should try comedy, and um and then and and then after I got out, when I went home, people started saying it, and people weren't saying it before I went went in. You know, because being a comic isn't something like I grew up wanting to be. You know, but then. Yeah, so that kind of put the little bug in me, and I wanted to give it a try. I wanted to give it a try, and then finally one day I just I, I went to a shitty show, worked up to, and seen how bad it was. I was like, oh, I'm better than at least, like I can't be worse than that. <laughs> so that's that's the most healthiest way to go into it, like literally people telling you you should be in it. That's oh, yeah. what I believe. Instead of like thinking you should do it, I'm not saying people aren't successful that way, but to me. Your your calling chose you. Do right, you agree with right. that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's absolutely true. You want to do it till you die? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't. I don't think I have a choice. Okay. You know, it's like I don't because I can't imagine. You have to. It's doing you. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I can't imagine doing something else. And and there have been times, you know how it is. Like in the beginning, where you still working nine to fives and you know whatever you got to have multiple side hustles and shit to survive in L.A. Yeah. And but it wears on you, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like because the mo the day I was the first time the first day and this wasn't too long ago, but the first day where I was like, okay, I can do this, I can do I can do just this and nothing else. I can never go back. You know, I mean, I could if I had to, but I would no, I, you, I would be miserable. No, you you you've you're jumped in now. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's no going back. So how, you're making a living at it now. Yeah. How long? Five years. Uh, no, it's been like two years, two and a half years. So like eight years. Listen to that. Yeah. How many people? And you're great. Thank you. Yeah. Like eight years and you're great. Like you're a great writer. Yeah. Like I've been funny enough to do, make a living at it for longer than a couple of years. But I just, you know, through the, the way I set my life up, didn't let me do all that. You know what I mean? But you don't have your wife and kids? No. Nope, no wife, no kids, none of that. What was your overhead? Um, it was well, well, see the problem was is that when I was in San Diego, I my life was such that I made just enough money to pay rent and go go up every night. Okay. You know, and so I never saved nothing. I never, you know, I didn't cuz I I had a great job. Cause they loved, they believed in my comedy, so they were like, "Look, when you need off, you just take off, you know. And when we can give you hours, we give you hours." And I was I was bar backing at at a bar. Okay. And I and it was, but it was like it was back breaking ass work, but I made just enough to live on. And you know, you got at some point you got to make that jump. You know, people could go move to L.A., move to L.A. You know, go on the road, go on the road. You know, but it was like I didn't have a car, didn't have a license. You know, anyway, so I moved up to L.A. I ended up homeless end up living in this shelter and then they make you, they kind of make you get your life. It, it was a shelter for Iraq veterans. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And they kind of make you get your shit together in a way. And right after that, everything started flipping. Like I got passed at the store and, you know, Segura took me on a road with him and then that made other people notice me. And then I got on spade show and then that, 
opened up all the doors, and then and then you know, then I start hitting the road, and then the pandemic hit. You know, fuck. But that, but that's just how it goes. I mean, I'm like, because all of these people are like, comedy's over. I'm like, no, it isn't. It's not over. That's gonna be right there waiting for everybody when when the shit is over. With. So I would say almost the number one thing waiting. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Wow, what well, it's so good to hear that you say that eight years because people don't understand. I mean, you're a grinder. Yeah, you're out. I see you at any show, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm out there in the valley. I'm out there at the store, or the improv, wherever, and you're there, and you're out there grinding. And so, but eight years, a lot of people think this comedy is, you know, something that's easier than that. And yeah. that's, that's, that's a grind, dude. Yeah, it takes a while, man. I mean. And that's real. Do you have an hour? Oh, yeah. An hour and a half, probably. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more than an hour and a half. Okay. See, now, I have so many questions for you. So I'm going to start slow. Because we, we really don't know each other. Yeah, let's get <laughs> but, it. Let's get it in. But man. I like to do that because. I mean, what I consider you, I'm not even really political, but I'm learning about all this stuff. I think you're probably a, as a moderate, right? Is that the right term? Mm. You're kind of in the middle? Because I, when I read yeah. about your stuff, it's very sensible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a healthy mistrust of the establishment. Mm-hmm. But I... um. You know, I, I guess if you had to sum me up on the spectrum, I'm a little, I'm a little lefty, mm-hmm. but I don't, I also don't trust the left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm always one of those people that's like, cause I'm very, I'm, I'm very fearful of becoming dogmatic, you know, or getting sucked into a thing where someone tells me that I, that it, all the thinking's been done. This is what we think. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. I don't get to think. No, 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 no. You know, it's like I'm, I'm very. F- that 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 turns me away very quickly. You know, it's like it, it doesn't. Even if you're saying the right thing to me, how you got there is just as important. You know, so some people, so a lot of people don't want to think. They just want to be long to a group, and have that group think for them. You know, and, and I'm I'm just never going to do that. So critical thinking. Yeah, so I guess I would say that I'm I'm mostly rejected by a lot of the people on my side because I don't want I'm you know I'm not I don't just settle for what the group is saying. You know, most of the time they have reasonable conclusions but it's like you know, I don't want to hear some other person's idea that you regurgitated. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get that from you. I get that people love you and respect you but i get that you're your own person yeah a little bit i know you because it's almost like and then what i hate is how people want you, they want you to respond to something that didn't even come from them mm-hmm. you know what i mean it it, it, it it almost be like a chef um eating a sandwich from gordon ram like gordon ramsey made and then throwing up on your table and going what do you think about this sandwich you know and it's like <laughs> it, it, it's like what do you want me to say about that it's, yeah it's not even your idea you know so i like i it's always healthy to, to challenge yourself because that's what it really is. It's not that I'm, you know, it's not that I'm trying to be some kind of contrarian or something, but it's like I'm constantly challenging my own beliefs and stuff because I don't want to be that person that's just thinking, that's just doing without thinking, you know? Yeah. Did you, you did you read the Malcolm X book? No. You never did? No. What's it called? I think it's called X. Oh, okay. No, I never read it. No. But he talks about how he was a zealot in one way of believing. I think, I mean, don't quote me, fix me in the comments, but the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. Okay. And then in jail, something happened because he didn't really like, you know, he said the white man was the devil. And he really had, didn't have a good feeling towards the white man, he would say. And then something happened and changed and literally overnight in jail after doing a lot of reading, he says it's not as it's not that way, and he let it go within like one night, and he changed. He was still doing what he was doing, but he wasn't as militant. Um, see, that's 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 a remarkable. That's what makes him a remarkable person because most people don't they don't have that in them. Yeah, he let it go to change themselves in one night, like to change something fundamental about you. Yes. You know what I mean? He said it like it left him because of the understanding he gained. Mm. 
Because I I don't know if someone can check me in the comments, but basically the relationship he was finding out in jail and he's finding other sides of the story he didn't know. So, because there's so much, you, you talk about so much in your Instagram. So, I'm going to be curious. Do you think Trump should have been banned on Twitter? No. Okay. No. I think... You heard that. Yeah. I think... And I'm going to tell you why. I think it sets a... a, a um, a dangerous precedent And I hate labels bro But you're a comedian And a black man And I don't know Which one you subscribe to first <laughs> And you're a human And you're a military man You have four or five labels But just know That already You're saying that You do not You just said You don't think He should have been banned on No okay. I think it was a bad move And I'm gonna tell you why it, I think again It's easy to get caught up and because a lot of times people don't give a shit what power they're giving up as long as it's to something they want. Mm -hmm. And that's how they fool you. Every time, every time the government has done some sneaky shit, it's been with the full support of half the people mm -hmm. because they're doing some sneaky shit on your behalf. You're not thinking about who's going to have that power later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, it, and it's like, um, you know, perfect example how, People were like, fuck the police, defund the police. And then at the same time, turning in those people at the, you know, calling the FBI to turn in people. You know, so it's like, it's like, it's like how can you be both of those things? I don't, because it's one thing to say, oh, perfect example, the same, the same people that go, Twitter's a private company. They can do whatever they want. They didn't feel that way when that bakery wouldn't bake that cake for those lesbians. Remember that? Yeah. They didn't go, oh, that's a private company. Why? Because it was something that they that they wanted. You understand it what I'm saying? Their, it was in their agenda. So it's like, right, it's one thing or the other. Uh, an example I always give is, um, <clears throat> remember, remember Bush one? I mean, or B uh, Bush Jr.? Yeah. So during his presidency, because that was my first time voting, when I voted when he ran against Gore, I think, right in the first um, time. And he, so... His presidency was the first time I ever heard of presidential signing statements, mm -hmm. right? Which is basically you, so when the president signs a bill in the law, right, they can accompany it with a little statement saying, you know, I understand this law to mean this, mm -hmm. or I understand this section to mean that, which is kind of a gray area, a legal gray area, because they're not allowed to make law without Congress. They're not allowed to go around Congress. But as long as they stay within the loose interpretation of what the law, what the bill says, nobody cares, right? But my point is, Bush signed like 78 of them or something like that. I don't know the exact number. And the whole time he was president, you know, because I used to wake up in the morning and listen to like Norman Goldman and Rachel Maddow, I had her ship record her podcast shit recorded. You were into it that much? Oh yeah! Every morning I woke up listening to these people. Why? Because I because I, I didn't have anything else going on in my life. <laughs> but you were eighteen, you said. I was no no no. By this time, I was probably like twenty twenty two something. Okay. Like that. But my point is, my point is, I heard all about these signing statements. Right? It's not fair. It's not right. Blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, as soon as Obama became in president. The right shut up about, or the left shut up about the signing statements. Then Obama started using them to, like, you know, make stuff, wildlife reserves and shit like that, and, and nobody had anything to say. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm talking about. Is it's like you keep saying Twitter's a private company because you because you feel like yeah we're sticking it to Donald Trump, but like, but what happens when they decide that you're saying some shit that they don't agree with? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like T-Mobile's a private company. What if they what, what if they decide they don't like what you said to your mama yesterday? Mm -hmm. It's like so yeah I don't and also here's the other thing I don't think it works I don't think banning him from Twitter has made him less powerful it just it just doubles down to his conspiracy people they all of them now they go see they're coming after us mm -hmm. you know it's like it didn't it didn't do anything but make you feel good for like a day yeah yeah now we don't know what these motherfuckers are out here doing see it's really going to make his base even that much more feel yeah, oppressed. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's going to make them crazy. And they're going to get even more riled up. So, okay, so you're saying that, and that's, I, I mean, listen, I think it's a slippery slope. This is what I think should be banned on Twitter. Anything illegal or highly immoral. But the highly immoral is hard to put a meter on because people's morality codes are different. 
Yeah. But anything illegal or hate, you know what I'm saying? But then there's there's levels of what hate is, right? Cause people can say one thing and some people say this and this. So, but, you know, pe- you say that he shouldn't be banned, people get really mad, you know? This is, they're like going crazy. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not gonna put on the cape for him. I mean, I don't care that he's banned. Yeah. But if I if we had if we had voted on it, <laughs> I, I would have voted no. Don't ban him. Yes. Yeah. So do you think that if someone voted for Trump, that they're a racist? Um, no, not necessarily. I, I mean, it, it it depends on what you mean when you say racist. But well. Because I think it's there's people that voted for Biden that are racist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in which side? Which way? I mean, and you know, in that. You've what been a, color? You, you've been in Hollywood a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about the. Because the, there's a lot of racists out here. Yep. You know, and they try to skate by espousing these like liberal views. Like, like. Give me, you, yeah, go ahead. Go in on this because I remember reading this. You um, said something. Just because here's here's my thing, right? It's like. My whole my whole perspective on Hollywood as a, as an industry mm-hmm. the, 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 is is that it, it's it's mind blowing to me that they get to look back now and go oh my god we've been racist this whole time you know and then because it, it's the same people that did the racist shit you know what I mean like 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 the like the people that run the people that run you know a certain network in they took down who had a, a a blackface episode um on on Saturday Night Live. It was it was it a uh, it was Chris Rock and somebody else in a sketch. Jimmy Fallon. Okay, Jimmy Fallon did Chris right. Rock. Okay, so 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 the same people are running SNL still. Yes, so, and then those same people just now discovered that they were being racist back then or whatever. And it's like it's like this. My point is this town is re- so responsible for so much racism and it's the same people that have been running the town this whole time that's still running everything so you're saying they're all of a sudden going oh this was bad we shouldn't have did that 20 years ago <laughs> let's stop that but they're not getting kicked out right well well i mean i because I, I don't know how you kick them out how do you kick out you know i equate it to like people that like worked at Par- like paramount and they're like clogging up the system. I'm just using Paramount, but like the system of Hollywood. And then these great new companies come in that are streamers, and then they hire the people from the old legacy media. And it's like you're doing right. the same. You're an innovator. You know, you can have <laughs> some people in there that are good strategists, but get a lot of this other clutter out of the way. Yeah, exactly. So I know you, 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 that's what you're saying in well, terms of the. It's. I, I just feel like this place is a. a, a this country really is. It's a place where the way things look matter more than the way things are, you know. And so, perfect example, L.A. is the hotbed of COVID-19, right? Supposedly. Supposedly, okay. And, but outwardly, we're the, we're the, the conscientious blue city that's going to save the world with all our programs and foundations and all this but that's just for show we, we spiking we're spiking here just like in florida you know what i mean and, and they were like what fuck covid you know so it, it, and obviously there's more nuance to the science and all of that stuff but my point is people here people here will go on twitter and go you know save lives wear a mask and then go to a party Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Because because the hypocrisy long, is real. Yeah, as long as your image is polling well, no one gives a fuck about what's really happening. Dude, a thousand percent. I I didn't realize why we're opening on Friday. Do you realize why we're opening? No. Well, we are the hotbed. If you talk, I talked to a couple of medical people, and they're like, "Yo, we're overstaffed. I mean, we're overstocked here. There's where there's no more room for any more patients." And, you know, it's cold this week, but, uh, you know, if you've been out, you see people that are all on the street jogging. I mean, mostly some people are wearing masks, but you see people gathering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Gavin uh, Newsom's got 1.3 million signatures against his recall. How many he need? 1.7. Oh, wow. So I'm like, duh, that's why they're opening up. (laughs) So all of Melrose is getting undone. 
all those things that are boarded up, I was there yesterday. Completely washing their windows, acting like it's business as usual. Wow. So we're going to find out two, one of two things. Yeah. It's going to spike like crazy, and it's done. Or it's not going to spike, and there's a little fucking fuckery. I mean, that's what, that's what, that's what he gets, though. For being, for being a pussy about but it. This is fr- but this is what I'm saying is he's about to be recalled and they're they're just opening the business and everyone's like, why is he doing that? It's clearly obvious. <laughs> he's about to be recalled. Right, right. It's so, just, he's been wishy-washy this whole time, though. So he's trying to balance his political aspirations with public health. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think California was really good. We were yeah. doing a lot of good and I don't mind that we were locked down, but I'm I'm fortunate, you know? Well, and I, What he, he should have done was had some balls and did a full on fucking lockdown. Yes. And not all of this, oh well, you know, you you know, the barbershop can open as long as it's like it's like none of that bullshit. Cause you've been over you I I went, I, went, I was going to the comedy store when it was still like when you could still when we were doing it in the window and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like you you know, the restaurant right next to it, it's like it's packed in there. Yeah. It's like, because those people are sitting down, that don't mean shit. It's like, if we had just really locked down for like a couple of months, we'd have the same amount of pain, but we'd be well away from being the hotbed of COVID-19. Dude, I know people that went to Florida, got it, didn't know they had it, came back, and now are chilling in their apartments. They have it. Well, what about the plane? And every, now they're in LA. That's why we're having problems. Right. You know, and I don't blame them, but I blame, like, that's why it's not going to stop. When I look at the Alabama football game, I had a whole rant about it. When I see all those people in the quad just jumping up and down, they won their seventh championship, congrats, you did it again. Is that essential? But So all of these students are in Alabama, thousands of them, bro. Just yeah. And ESPN's reporting it. So why is football essential but a small pizza shop isn't? Why is a small businessman getting fucked? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It doesn't make sense. Again, because it's not, it would be different if they could demonstrate, you know, somehow, you know, COVID doesn't spread at football games, but it does spread at pizza shops. Right. But they can't, but they just, they just picking and choosing. Just like, because they act like it was a mystery when it started going up again, even though it started going up again right after they opened schools. Right. And it's like, what the fuck do you think is going to happen in these schools, man? Yeah. You think these little kids going to keep their mask on and not sp- share germs? And- no way. You're crazy. Yeah. It's like, I think we're well past the point where where any of the things we're doing for show are helping. So when you're talking about that, you're talking about this is one thing and then this is another thing, like what's show and what's going on. So how did you feel when the protest started happening just in terms of the pandemic part of that. Um, uh, oh, so how did I feel about the pandemic? Well, like, cause the pandemic pro- was raging, but then, then, you know, like they don't want you to go to a pizza shop, but you can gather on Hollywood Boulevard with, you know, 400,000 people. <laughs> well, yeah, man, I, honestly, I, I didn't care. And you didn't care. I didn't care because I'm like, because I went out there to a couple of the protests. You know, everybody was masked up. And even though it's like clearly some people caught COVID. Everybody from, was not masked up. Oh, I mean, I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying where I was. But but clearly people caught COVID at these protests. But yeah. they felt like what they want, what they were protesting for. 100%. Mattered more. You know 100%. I mean? and, and for me, it's like it's one of them things where that was something that like bubbled over. And there's nothing you can do about that. You can't put that back in the bag. You saw they try to put curfews, people still out in the street. Like, you can't stop people from, you know. It, but it, honestly, again, that again that was also kind of a lot for show, too. Because cause I, I wonder. Who is doing the show? for White those, people. Yeah, okay, so explain that. Because. <sighs> so man, the and, Black and, Lives and, Matter protest in June, a lot of the show was for white people. I no, think no, I know what you mean. No, but. what I mean is. I and, and this might just me being cynical, right? Mm-hmm. But I wonder how widespread and uproarious the protest would have been had everyone not been locked in the house for two months. You know what I mean? 
Interesting. Because to me, it seemed like the perfect storm of things where it was like everyone had been locked down for a little longer than they thought they were. Um, and a lot of people didn't have work mm-hmm. to go to. Mm-hmm. And they had shit else going on. Everyone had finished Tiger King. <laughs> and and it was like <laughs> and it was like, yo, do you do do you hate black people? No. You wanna go outside? Yeah, let's get the fuck out here. You know what I mean? But I wonder I wonder if you know, if George Floyd had died in January. Mm. And the the movement was in February. I wonder how many people would like you know it was, was like you where well, you have something to lose. There's because to me that's it's it's just when there's nothing at stake, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to take what you're doing a hundred percent. When when you put someone on line like okay you got to take off work, you got to uh, inconvenience yourself. There's no we're not holding up no traffic because remember because remember how people in L.A. acted when people try to shut down the highway mm-hmm. during regular times, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. People like motherfucker, look, I agree with you, but <laughs> shit. The, the 405. Right? Yeah, so I, I wonder, I just, I'm just suspicious of people because I saw people pull up, take a selfie, leave. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I just wonder how many people really, and here we are, not that long later, maybe what, nine months later, six months later? Six. Yeah, and, you know, all those people that was talking all of that shit, where are they? Dude. It was like, black people still are here. Somebody just got killed the other day by the police. Mm-hmm. So we you know, it's like, where's all the, where's all, where's that movement? Because it felt like in the moment, it felt like, oh, this shit is never going to die. This is different. I, yes, I do. I have so much to say to that. But for me, I felt different. So, but you're black. So you have to tell me if you're saying it felt different than it was different. You're not the first person to say this. Yeah, it felt different. But, okay, yeah. So, okay, so me taking off my cynicism hat, right? Yeah. I do think it was different. Okay. You know, in the sense that, no, I because the protest often doesn't make it. It most things, nothing changes from a protest, like immediately, mm-hmm. right? But what I think it did do was, because this generation is so up on trends and what's trendy and what's trending and those things, it made it so people don't feel. So people feel more empowered to like speak up and speak out about certain shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. um, I don't know. But it remains to be seen. I'm I'm still waiting to see. Dude, that that's such a good bit. You know that you're working on that. You had it to be on what that bit right there. Okay. Fucking George Floyd. If he happened in the winter, see how many people march. <laughs> Dude, that's how. Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's what you are. That's a genius mm-hmm. bit. That's the way to word it, right? Now. Right. George, let George Floyd happen in the winter. See how many people are out. It's exactly what you just said, dude. It's hilarious. It's a dark, hilarious bit and a true bit. Because it was real comfortable to protest in June. It's all balmy. Um, so you write that down. You know, co- comics are the only people that don't get mad when you stop. <laughs> Hell no, of course not. <laughs> you stop me a conversation to take notes. Um, I'm gonna. T- All right. So I was asking you about Trump, and I'm not political, but you have to say that. And I didn't even vote, and I already got hollered at by a lot of people. But I think voting is a lot of bullshit. But you might tell me differently. No. Okay, we'll see. But you know, one guy was asking me, he's like, you know, Trump is Trump is racist, 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 right? And it does. It's. It, I do hear from uh, black people that at least five, and who mostly are comedians. Some just you know regular nine to fivers that they've never felt white supremacist and such have been so emboldened, and that was like a message that was really hitting me. Mm. But and I said, well, what got confusing is. Is like, you know, Wheezy back in Trump or Cube. And I know you had a great quote about Cube and who I worked with, who is a smart dude and a cool dude and Candace Owens. And so my question to you is, is every black person that doesn't disagree with Trump a sellout? 
Because that was the message I was getting. Um, Take your time. Um, that's because that's kind of a yeah. That's that's a loaded question. Because look, I know, but so, dude, that's what white the white moderate <laughs> is saying. That's what the white mo- I think Weezy is as down as it gets. I think Candace Owens is really intelligent, but you, it's like you, 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 if you like them, you're a sellout. Because okay, okay, but like, I also love. A lot of things that Omar says, that lady. I, I, I like a lot of different things. But can't, okay, but see, Weezy, Weezy got a pardon out of, out of taking the I know, so that doesn't look too you know, good for and, him. And, was he really looking at 10 years? I don't know what he was looking at. I mean, he'd been to prison before. He had a lot of gun charges. Yeah, he, and he went to prison before. I don't think he wanted to go again. Um, but, but, um, but also, and Ice Cube was just trying to get I think he was trying to help the community. Right, Ice Cube was trying to help the community. Yeah, and both did, parties. He said. Well, and he and he said that Trump just called him back first. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so that's who he talked to. It wasn't like he was t- siding with, but um, but also it's like, because he, here here's where it breaks down in communication. Right, is I think a lot of white people think a racist is a bad person. And, and it's like, and since, and it's like, and you and so y'all look at it like, since I'm not a bad person, I'm not a racist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then, and then, so when you do some shit that perpetuate racism and somebody says that's racism, it's like, to me, most, most white folks main concern is that when it's all said and done, that they aren't the racist. Like yeah, they... Don't. White people care more about them not being the racist than about racism, right? So, yep. it, and and I have this I have this thought experiment I do I well, I used to do all the time because I had to, but it was like uh, I would ask a white person like, "Hey, if you if if you had to just to, to end all racism in the world, if you all you had to do was go on live television, halftime Super Bowl, and Tell everybody how racist you are. <laughs> and you know the first thing to fly out their mouth? But I'm not racist. Oh, yeah. Right? Not, oh, of course. Like if I, if, I, if, I, if I gave you the same thing, but it was to cure cancer or world peace, you wouldn't go, but I don't have it. Right? It's like, why is your first reflex, but I'm not a racist? Right? Because that's not what I asked you. I didn't ask you if you were racist. I asked you if all you had to do was say you were to get rid of it all. Right, but it's like your concern is mainly your. So anyway, so my point is, that's a good. We don't always mean the same thing when we say racism, because when most most time when black people talk about racism, we're talking about the systemic problem, and and a, and an isolated incident is just more of that. And I think a lot of times when white people are talking about racism, they're talking about an incident, like an occurrence. Yes, you know what I mean. And they're like, so is is Trump racist? Like, does he hate white? Does he hate black people? No, I don't think so. Is Trump racist in the sense that he perpetuates policies and and worldviews that that uh, that continue to oppress minorities? Of course. I mean, he's always been like that. The, the, but the, the the big thing with Trump is he doesn't give a fuck about the Klan and all of them. He cares about him. And if you support him, he'll fuck with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like if we <laughs> if we'd have had a Black Lives Matter for Trump organization, mm-hmm. he'd have, he'd have probably ain't no telling what he would have fucking done because mm-hmm. he, he's just such a narcissist that a little stroke of the ego, and he's on your he's on your side. Now, Candace Owens, look, I I think Candace Owens is one of those people that is. So she's well. Let me. Let me. She's well spoken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. seems highly intelligent. Again, I don't know enough about her, but she seems to make very good points. She's a wordsmith and a bullshit artist. Right? <laughs> she, she's all those things. She, but I think very I think, pretty. Yeah, I think Candace Owens is a contrarian. Um, that is masquerading as as a skeptic, you know? So do you think that she is a sellout? Oh, well, of course. Of course. Uh, well, okay. That's, that, that's a hard, that's also a hard question to answer too, because I don't know if we, mean, I don't know if we mean the same thing when we say sellout. Well, what I mean is this, it's like, 
like you you had this stuff in your Instagram and and you know this is why I wanted to talk to you because this is what white people have to do or people just have to talk but people try to speak for other races and that's like I want to talk to you about your white ally video. Okay. But what I mean is is that here's this woman, she says some stuff and she seemed to make some intelligent points at some point. And I was like, that was interesting. And if I like her, I'm a conservative supporting a sellout. And I'm like, am I? Like, she seems like she makes money and whatever. Okay, I guess her husband's white. It doesn't bother me. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's who she was attracted to that day. Yeah. But like. I don't know that. I don't know anything about her personal. Yeah, life. but it doesn't bother me. Like, but like, so like when she, with Cardi, like Cardi B is is useful for what I want Cardi B to be useful for. Okay. But when the Biden administration used her to like try to get fans and like to vote <laughs> and then they put her against Candace Owen, I'm like, that's just not a fair fight. No. And that's just not, that's not her wheelhouse. Have her perform for you, bro, but not talk like that. And I'm not dissing you, Cardi. If you ever see this, I'm a fan, but you know, there's wheelhouses just like Candace Owens is not going to shake like her. Maybe she can. I don't know. But Cardi B has her own strengths. So I feel like Candace Owens became this intelligent person and people just think it's she. I only hear that she's a sellout. And that's why I get confused because see, black people backing things that are considered bad. And I'm like, are they all sellouts? See, I don't think Candace Owens is a sellout because I don't I don't I don't think she necessarily believes all that shit she's saying. It's like that's how she makes money. That it would be selling out. Like then. I could predict. I could. Pre okay. Well, then she's a sellout. I, Cause I can predict what her opinion is gonna be on some shit without before I even hear her say it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the opposite of whatever black people think. You know what I mean? So it's like, or she's gonna say always. Nothing. Is that always the case? Pretty much. Yeah. Like whenever, whenever one of these dudes, whenever an unarmed black person gets shot by the police, mm -hmm. I know exactly what her take is gonna be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She's gonna find a find some way to like justify it. You know what I mean? And, which is, that's her, and that's her will. The pro see, my problem is that we don't really have, we don't have that person on the left. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We don't have that, like we don't have a Candace Owens on the left. We don't have a Ben Shapiro. But maybe it's just, maybe it's not profitable when people on the left are that way because we're the, you know, I guess our side is like, don't be mean, you know, don't, don't be a bully and shit. They don't, they don't have those restrictions over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like it's like fight. It's like fighting an enemy that's willing to like use poison and assassins and bombs, and we're just like the like the Romans that are like, no, a fair fight is on flat ground with no sneaky bushes. Or yeah, nothing. it's like we we won't fight dirty. Or it's like we, it's but like, the left can get. Come on. Oh yeah, we we can get nasty so long as we can make it look like we're not being nasty. That you just said it. See, so that right, will be called fronting. The right, the right, the right will be nasty and not give a fuck how you feel about yes. it. Yes. That's what I want. Yes, exactly. I want somebody on our side that's <laughs> cutthroat, that will say the dumbest, most nonsensical shit to you with a straight face and not fucking back up an inch. Think about the think about the fact that there's people that are still, and I'm talking about people in, in politics, yeah, that are still. With President Trump, mm -hmm. that are still like uh, my career is attached to his, and I'm with him till it's over. Oh yeah, you know it's like some people would just. I, we need one of those people. We need those. We need people like that over here. Ride or dies. Yeah, that are like just crazy, just crazy, and and willing to fight dirty, openly. Yeah, yeah. But see, you say stuff though that is. I think you criticize everything. Yeah. So like you, you did a tweet, Kamala Harris, and you said something about you grew up to be a prosecutor in jail. What was your exact? Um, I don't remember exactly what but, I said, but it was the, like but jail a lot of your own <laughs> race. <laughs> yeah. Is that I mean, what you said. The sentiment is, it, it was true. It was like, because again, on my side, it was like, 
a lot of people were acting like when Joe Biden that was the savior one that it was yeah, so weird. It's like we're just going back to how shit was, not not better. Yes, exactly. Right, like shit was shit was shit was shit got crazy, and now we're back to not crazy but still evil. Yeah, right. And it's like that. What are we celebrating? It's like. I, I'm, I'm gonna wait till they do some shit because cause see I got a lot of blowback because it was literally the day that the election was called and people were like Brian why, why don't you give why don't you give them time I was like what you mean they've both had several decades yes and I'm just criticizing them for shit they done and you cheering over some shit they said yes it's like fuck what they saying they politicians like until they do something different than what they've done I'm gonna keep shitting on them and and Kamala Harris was a cop. She was a prosecutor. And she and she locked up a lot of black people. You know what I mean? And now she talking some different shit, but they haven't done nothing different so far. You know, I mean, they're making a lot of moves. They make a lot of moves, but they're not above criticism just because they're on your side. And they're not really even on your side, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, you said that, and I loved it. Yeah, in any, in any other country, Joe Biden would be a Republican. Joe Biden would be on the right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, it's only here that it's only here that the left will cheer Joe Biden, who is he's he's Ronald Reagan, basically. Like he, he's got that dude. I said this. I said we went from a seventy-three year old orange man to a seventy-eight year old rose rosea <laughs> man. Like it's still a white old dude in there who was a career politician who's got some definite skeletons in there. Oh, yeah. And who's definitely made money off the system. So if you really wanted to change, you should have put Kamala in. And, you know, people are like, well, say, you know, America's too, you know, <laughs> black people telling me that America's too racist for that, which obviously. Well, Kamala? They, yeah. Well, see, here's, here's, here's a black a- woman, but I think she can still get in there anyway. Yeah, because, man, I'm going to tell you something. I, but that would have been a big change. When I remember. A long time ago, it was me and a group of my friends. This is when I was in the military. And I remember it coming up of, like, what are the chances of a black person ever being president, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, some people laughed, and some people were like, ah, oh, maybe before we die, blah, blah, blah. But when I brought up a, a woman being president, it was like people people get angry about it. Really? Yeah. I think, it, I think wow. there is... Uh, that that's a little extra sum. A black woman being president, I think that that would piss that would piss off the very craziest people. Maybe we need that. Yes. Yeah. We needed to get over the hump. Yeah. That's why Trump's. This couldn't have worked out better for America. And for, as far as we got Trump one good time, and we got to see how bad it can get and how how bad it can be when you're complacent politically. Hmm. And 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 he got up out of there before he did permanent damage. You know what I mean? But we needed, we kind of needed that little. You know, I don't know how much trouble you got in as a kid, but it's like you know how like your mom is like, I'm gonna let you sit in jail overnight. You know, or or, <laughs> or one of those punishments like that was like, okay, mm-hmm. well stay your ass out there then, mm-hmm. it's just so you learn a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. not enough for you to die, mm-hmm. but just we because you know, we saw he exposed all the cracks. Yeah, that's which yeah. I think was good because because th- that's my thing. Wh- the, the the worst part about Trump is that it gives people a boogeyman to put everything on and everyone ignores the all of the political um, I, I, I think a perfect analogy is is Hurricane Katrina right when it was like a lot of people didn't evacuate right away because New Orleans gets a lot of hurricanes and the levees always hold up mm-hmm. and so people were like oh what the fuck levees and then the levees broke people were like oh shit and it's the same thing. It's like we're supposed to have all these checks and balances, all these watchdogs, all these inspectors general that's supposed to make sure that a tyrant can't do anything that's going to permanently damage the country. And they all just moved out of the way and let Trump do all of these things that were like break all of these political norms and all of this stuff just because they were – sycophants you know they, they they thought it would benefit their careers or whatever so they just let him do what he wanted to do you know they let the motherfucker replace the motherfucker that was investigating him mm-hmm. like, like shit like that it, it's like all of the people that's supposed to you know theoretically be in the way of such things because because we're lucky trump wasn't evil 
we lucky he was just he was just a dumb narcissist and not like an evil genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if he had a plan, imagine the, the rioters in the Capitol. If he had actually devised a plan, he could have he could have taken over. Mm-hmm. He could have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he, he just wanted had a cuckoo. Yeah, he just wanted an ego stroke. Mm-hmm. He, I'm, you know, he didn't know they were going to even do the damage they did, but just just to get and 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 they went in there with really no. No concrete plan. They could have blown up the building. They could have killed some people, you know. But they didn't have any real direction because, again, Trump is just a narcissist. He's not an evil genius. But if he imagine if he really had like Hitler level focus, like I'm gonna take over, mm-hmm. he'd have took over, and mm-hmm. it would and and it was too late for them to do it. And they still, you know, kissing his ass. And I don't even. That's why I don't, I don't trust them. I don't trust the liberals either. See, they, do you think politicians really have any power? Don't you think it's just money, bro? Don't you think money runs this world? Come on. Especially you. Well, my, my, You're an informed person to ask this because you work yeah. in the military. Well, everything everything is about money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our nation was founded on uh, about I mean, money. The thing with Trump is Hillary, all those people were pictures with them. Everybody was all cool until he went and ran. <laughs> then all of a sudden everyone hated him. But they were all chilling with each other. So that's like, wait, all of a sudden it's just everything's, you hate each other? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I think the upper echelons. Well, well, well I think, I think, well, this is what I think. I think politics is the next best thing to being a billionaire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the true way that a poor man can have the sort of power. That, but that's what I mean. Trump's not a smart person. You Name another billionaire that's run for president. I can name one in my whole life, Ross Perot. Yeah. Because they all, they, they were all probably looking at Trump like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. You know, you hear about all these people on the outside. It's like, they have, they have money because it only costs, it only costs like $20,000 to buy a senator. Yeah. So why the fuck would I spend millions of dollars to become president and have to do all of that work when I can just buy off and have, get what I want? Like, that's how most. So you're saying, because he was just doing it because he wanted that ego stroke. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think. I think it's true. I think the rumor is that he just did it to get press and he didn't think he was going to win. I think he did it out of spite. I really do believe that when Obama shit on him at that, that uh, dinner, at that, at that, uh, that's, that's another big rumor. Yeah. I really believe that that cut him a little deep. Yeah. And, um, I've read that. And I think when he, and he ran just to get it, just to get in there. And when people started, when he started seeing the crowds show up for him, he was like, he got that comic feeling. Like, yeah. yo, I'm killing. <laughs> yo. <laughs> I'm killing. <laughs> yo, dude, he is funny. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. Okay, good. N- not on purpose. But, yeah, but he's a funny oh, character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, that I he, he he you can't stop watching the guy. Yeah, he's he's the funniest president we've ever had. Like, in terms of just. Obama the- had some good delivery, though, dude. Well, Obama was in, Obama was only funny intentionally. Yeah, intentionally. You Trump, know, yeah. Trump is just if you if he didn't exist and you wrote a show about him, like you made up a Trump president, it would be the funniest shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I hate to ask you all these questions. They're annoying. Get mad at me, but I think you got a great brain, so I want to really dig in there with you. No, man, take a crack. <laughs> so, do you feel that the com? I want to talk to you about. Racism. Do you feel that the comedy community is open? Because for me, but again, I'm white male, you know, dude. I feel that I see everyone in the comedy community of all walks of life. And I feel like it's always been that way since I've been involved. And I feel it's been very accepting. Do you feel that? Um, It's one of the most accepting places I think on earth. But again, I'm not a black man. Mm. I mean, I don't think the comedy community is any different. In really? Any anything? Else. No, because because look, I think comics will generally accept you, but I think that's true of in, of anything that was originally dominated by white people. I feel like if you're black, you have to be exceptional like you have to there's a higher hurdle for you to clear to get it to be accepted but once you accept it 
you understand what I'm saying? Where it's like, where it's like, in comedy, funny is more powerful than any any other yeah. thing. And so if you're if you're phenomenal, you'll be accepted. Even the most, because there's comics that's racist than the motherfucker. But even the most racist comic, like openly racist comic, still would have to, you know, if they say you're not funny, because you being funny isn't up to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like if you go on stage and then I go on stage, and you, you, you know, it speaks for itself. You you can deny it or whatever, but comics have the tendency to be um, honest but, with themselves. Yeah, but you're you're saying com- the laugh trumps all. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying your ability, your ability to do stand up. But to be a black comic, you have to be. You're saying super, super, super. Oh yeah, I mean, cause, super cause, better as opposed to just middle of the road that might get other people as many opportunities. Right. I, I'm I'm saying, and I mean, I think this just applies to show business. Period. I'm saying that that in a lot of instances. A white mediocrity is seen as just as marketable as black excellence. Mm. So it's like for me to, because that's how the industry thinks. They think for me to sell you to white America, who is my audience, that, that's how they think, right? You have to be phenomenal. But, but I could take this kid that just got off the bus, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know what I'm saying, and and we can and, and look, we can pay you to make him seem funny, right? We can pay you to write some shit for him, but we can sell him. You know what I mean? And that's how that's how Hollywood thinks. That's how show business thinks. So when you say mm-hmm. the comedy community, if you're talking about comedians, I would say yes, it's it's way more accepting than than almost most other places. But the whole the industry as a whole, no. The industry as a whole, no. But I mean, like, I don't want to ask you about that. But I mean, like, comedy. You can go to any club on any night and see a mix of every type of person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. And I think... Where you might not see that in other businesses. I think that's only true when you hit a certain level, though. You know what I mean? Because when... Because comedy... Stand-up is one of those things that there's such a low barrier to entry. Yep. It's a lot of... No barrier. It's a lot of trash at the bottom. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. And when when you swimming through that trash, it's just like everywhere else in America. You know, it's racist over here, misogynist over there. It's like evil motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when you hit, I think when you hit a certain level where you start, you know, sitting down with the Jamie Kennedys of the world and shit like that, then you're, when you're, or, in, or let me put it another way. When you get to the point where you, when you enca- mostly encounter people that are secure in their careers. Mm-hmm. That's when you get the pure real shit because comics love comedy. Yeah. So if a motherfucker see you being funny, like you said, we don't know each other. Mm-mm. You just saw me be funny one time mm-hmm. and was like, oh, and then you saw me be funny again. and was like, oh, this is consistent. Mm-hmm. And that's all most comics care about just to get to know you some. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That to me, that's the difference. I don't think that it's like there's less racism amongst comics, but I think comics are just willing to have that discussion you know a comic is willing to be like because we spend so much time breaking down how we feel and what we think and so most of the time when you talking to a comic about something they're not being reactionary they have deep thoughts about some shit yes and a lot of times there's angles that you didn't even think about and you know so i think it's just healthier (laughs) it's like if a race if a racist comic meets a if a racist comic meets a black comic, they'll have a much healthier discussion than if a racist on the street meets a black man on the street. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. But yeah, what and what I meant was I just feel that I've met all types of people from all walks of life in comedy and I was just saying that I think that I don't know how many places you really get to do that. Yeah. I feel like comedy, like you said, there is no barrier to entry, but to be no. successful, you have to be good. I mm-hmm. mean, it doesn't always mean that's true. You can also be okay and be successful. You have to either be you have to either be good or have no shame whatsoever. Yes. Dude. Dude. That's so good. But that's show business, right? That's so good, bro. Either talented or you will willing to do anything. That's so good. 
That's a great way to put that. I always say that there's, I don't want to name names, but like there's a couple people that aren't comedians that are big stars in certain genres of TV and they just never get butt hurt by the criticism and they just, oh, yeah. and they just keep going. They, yes, know, they, know, they know who they are. <laughs> but dude, I take a lesson from them yeah. because they just keep going and like that ball of yarn, they get bigger I, and I used bigger. To, I used to get upset with those people and then I realized, oh, you know what? No, you can learn from them, bro. And also like, that's just not my lane. Yeah, it's not your lane. It's, it's not my lane. You know, cause it's like, it's like there's, there's a wall of dicks right here and you got to suck a hundred of them to, to get a movie and you're like, I would never. And then you see somebody get busy on the first dick. Mm-hmm. You're like, nasty bitch. And then she on the 50th dick, she like whore. And then <laughs> when she's when she's holding up a statue at the award show, you can't sit back and go, <laughs> fuck her. Why? She, she did something you weren't willing to do. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, it's, there's people out there that they're willing to do things that I'm not willing to do. Yeah, and but here's the other thing. I'm talented, so I don't have to. Yeah. Now, now maybe that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna be a big star one day and nothing like that. But I'm good. Like if I if I get, you know if I if I'm a, if I only stay this successful, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Everything on top of this is a bonus. So it's like, but some people are like they know they know they come here with no talent and their plan was just to network their way and it works. Mm-hmm. It works if as long as you don't feel shame. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like nobody can make you feel bad. It's like I don't give a fuck. I don't care if that. Jo- I don't care if that's a shitty joke. I don't care if that's something I read on the back of a cartoon or, or on a, of a cereal box when I was nine. <laughs> you know, I don't care if I've heard a hundred comics tell it. That's people that feel like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I, do, I, do you feel that Hollywood is being in the last couple of years more inclusive though? No, really. Mm-mm. Not at all. You don't see more black stories, more black creators, more black origin stories. Yeah, but that's all. That's all on the surface. Because, like I said, it's, yes, it's the same you, people. But do you? Okay, well, do you see a change on the surface at least? Oh yeah, yeah. I, do. I mean, like, for, like there's the genuine change, and then there's what I call the the Geico change. Like you watch these commercials and they're clearly putting two people. Do you ever see more mixed race couples on TV <laughs> than a commercial? And it's right, like, right. Oh, they look like they totally just were together no, all it, this time. It, it totally happens. But and I'm like, this is fucking forced. I mean, I like the effort. Yeah. So, I mean, I do feel that there is a try, but you're saying it's just a band aid. It's just for show. Yeah. The moment the numbers start saying, Cause I know a cat. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put their business don't, in the street. Don't put them on blast. No, no, I wouldn't do that. But I know. I know a cat that like booked the commercial, filmed the commercial, and then they decided to go with another guy because they felt like he marketed better in in a white. It was not America, but in a white country, you know. And it was like that kind of stuff still happens. It's like at the end of the day, it's all about money, and they're only gonna do what they think makes them. They're only going to do what they think make them money or what they think makes them stop losing money. Mm-hmm. So I think right now, a lot of the putting putting black faces on things to, to appear diverse is just to stop the anticipated loss of money for not being diverse enough, right? Mm-hmm. But the truth is, if, the, if they wanted to be diverse, it's like, I because I don't want, more black people in commercials and more mixed race couples and stuff. I want more black people running shit. Mm-hmm. If because because like where the because the casting director still ain't black, the director ain't black, the writer ain't black. You know what I mean? So so that means left to your own devices. Like should the Black Lives Matter shit die down? It's gonna go right the fuck back to where it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just you showing me this face, so everyone goes, "Whoa, this, you know we getting real diverse out here." It's like, no, you aren't. But like, I totally agree with that. But like, so you want you want Tyler Perry on multiple levels, <laughs> who's an owner, creator. Well, I just want distribute those, everything. I want those barriers gone. You know yes. what I mean? I want them to like. I want. Because it, it because it's true. It's like every time I walk into walk onto a set, everyone in power is white, and then there's a diversity person that's black or brown or trans 
or something. And it's like it's like a check in the box. You know this? Like, you know, you watch football? Mm-hmm. You know the Rooney rule? I don't know what that is, but I heard of it. The Rooney rule is basically the the head of the, the owner of the Steelers, the ex- uh, he's oh the, yeah, but he but he got a rule introduced to where when there's a when there's a, a coaching vacancy they have to they have Educate to interview a black person they have to interview at least one black person mm-hmm. right and a lot of teams will like find a white coach and then like bring in a black person so they can get that interview out of the way and I think Hollywood's at that stage of like okay <laughs> it's not okay but let's just let's bring them in for show so we. Can Check the diversity and get them the fuck about it, you yeah. know. But everything behind the scenes is still the same, you know. It's like, it's like, it's like people that like paint over, over their shitty. Like they paint over their house when they need to replace the siding, but they paint it. Yeah, it's like that's what that's what we're doing here. But I'm not I'm not complaining. I mean, I've made some money off of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's but I'm not fooled by it either. But yeah, but I mean the head the head of ABC is a black woman, so that's a. Is she? What do you mean? What do you mean by the head? The CEO the, who runs the, the president of the network is a black woman. Oh, okay. So, like, that's a good start. Yeah. And but I totally, totally understand what you're saying and agree with you. But I just wanted you to st- I wanted to see if you saw like. No, I didn't know. I did not know that the head of ABC was a black. Yeah, woman. Yeah, she's a black. Woman. No, I never met her. Um. Okay, that's interesting. So let me. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I got to ask you another question. Like. But here's the other side of that. Hold on. Before, real quick. I was going to say this, but I'm scared. Real quick it. before you move on. Here's the other side of it. Yeah. Please know that I don't think that having... I don't think that having black people in positions of power is going to make Hollywood a better place. Mm-hmm. This is going to make it a less racist place, like a more diverse place. But but people are still people are still going to be shitty. You know, it's just going to be... A black Harvey Weinstein like molesting actresses and shit. You know what I mean? <sighs> it's because 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 power corrupts people. So Fuck. I'm just saying it's, it will be diverse, but we'll still be the, e- the evil bedrock of America. A diverse fucking. Yeah, we'll be, just be a diverse evil. A diverse plant fucker. Yeah. Do you know about the plant? No. Or Harvey. He you, fucked, he fucked plants. No, there was a. You know the one of the things was that. You know, if a girl, was, she didn't f- comply or something, and he was like, you're never going to work in this town again. He would jerk off in a fucking potted plant. Holy shit, Like man. a palm tree, and he's like, this fucking plant knows how to play the game. <laughs> so you're just saying it's going to be another plant fucker. Yeah, man, because we, cause, because that's just that's just one problem. I mean, the real, the real problem here is that. Well, I mean, you got Bill Cosby, which I have a lot of opinions on. Yeah. And I hate that, that I hate I want to ask you this But I'm, I hate about race And identity politics But I want to ask, ask you something About Bill Cosby And I, I get your take I'm from Philly Okay From Philly huh? So I I grew up You know If I look back on it A lot of my heroes Were black You know Without really knowing it Like you know Run DMC Eddie Murphy You know Prince All the shit That was raised me in the 80s was like black culture and bill cosby himself was like one of the greatest comedy specials ever yeah, and yeah. he was a local philly dude and not that i knew him but my first book i read about show business one of his was him and he he went to temple and he was always even before, like in he was known as a guy that would go back to philly a lot and so he gave 30 million dollars to temple and they made the Cosby building. And when I was in Philly two years ago, they took Cosby's name off of it, but kept the building. Mm. So going back to be as com- comedian, Brian Simpson, and I love him, but Temple is trash. <laughs> because, right? You're basically, you still have the rape wing. <laughs> you took the money but took his name off of it. Isn't right. that complicit? Yeah. They did not give the money back. The building is still there. Right. And what is the, is the, what is It's the, a school. It's some school of something in Temple. Is it the women's studies building? No. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. So there's a lot of fucking There's yeah. a lot of levels to it. 
yeah, yeah. I um. Wouldn't that money be? Isn't that blood money? Yeah, man. But that, but 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 to be honest with you, man, that's what is. That's what being an American is. I agree. It's, but I'm saying is people act like we're this puritanic society and we're fucking not. <laughs> right. That's why I got mad at Biden. Oh, this is an America. Yes, it is, dude. Yeah. We're fucking fucking bashing was heading for their car. Yeah, it's like we see some drone. Like we we hear like some drone blew up a. a a school in Yemen, you know, and people are like, that's wrong. That's wrong. You're like, listen, this is to keep the price of iPhones under fifteen hundred dollars. A hundred percent. Well, you know, some terrorists gotta go, dude. Exactly. Every time you text in your phone, fu- all these people tweeting about oppressions are tweeting in on an oppressive tool. Yeah. This so. shit wasn't made under great <laughs> circumstances. <laughs> I mean, right. we, for somebody to live, somebody's gotta fucking. You know. You know. What we die. should do. You know. What we should do, Jamie. Huh. We should start a business where uh, where we call it like like guilt guilt free, you know, <laughs> where it's like you you come and assemble your own shit, so so you don't have to feel guilty. Like we get the parts from Apple. Yeah, you know what I mean? that actually would do well. You come do the slave labor, but you get an iPhone when it's over with. That would actually work well. It's like you put together two iPhones. You you talk keep, about walking the walk. <laughs> Yeah, you keep one, and Apple sells the other one. Wow, or something. I don't know, dude. But that's like walking the walk. But most most people ain't willing to do that shit. No, they're not. Oh, well, no, we can't even do. We can't even fucking do recycling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a in my building. There's a giant fucking black uh, bin that says trash only, and a giant blue bin that says recycle only, and they're both. Always full of trash and recyclable shit. It's 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 like it's like people get to a to a point where they got they they gotta go this or this, and they're like, "Fuck that!" You think people are gonna go out of their way to to yeah. do the right thing? No, they just care about whether it looks like they're doing the right thing. So so like you so you're 38, and my question is, do you feel that? I feel that the younger race. I mean, the younger gen- younger, younger race. race. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that sounded like a racist from the future. Like like this, no like the N word is banned and, and they just go the younger race. The younger race. It was, I like no, but the younger generation, I feel like racism is a lot less. Am I delusional? I feel yeah. the younger generation is much more inclusive, but maybe I'm just following rappers mm. on Fairfax, his Instagram. Maybe I'm following too much, you know, Jaden Smith. Maybe I'm watching too many Drake, but I feel like yeah. Tyler, the creator. I do feel like a lot of different people from the younger generation are much more open. No, that's Am that, I wrong? That's that SoCal fog, man. It is, isn't it? Yeah, because like that happened to me. Like No, because rap, because you understand. So you are hip-hop. Now, I don't know if you're into hip-hop or not, but D.C. Yeah. would be considered hip-hop. So for me, it was always Brooklyn, you know? So I was from Philly. We had a scene, but it wasn't known. So it was New York. It was The Bridge. It was KRS-One. That was hip-hop. And when the West Coast opened it up, with NWI, I was like, what is this? And then when ATL came in and you saw that hip hop had its own flavor around the country and now right. the world. So within hip hop, there's a lot of faces doing it now. And they're mm. very, they're, they're, it's not just a hardcore dude in, in, in Tim's and a ski hat rapping about, you know, the city. People are rapping about all types of shit. And I feel that in a way is opened up the idea of, it made hip hop more open. I'm not saying it made it better or worse, but I feel like it made other things less racist. Does that make sense or no? Um, I don't know. I mean, like anybody I, can I rap now and not be excluded as much. Yeah, but th- but th- but how how is uh? Because rap is a, rap started as a black thing, hundred percent, and cool her right, and bl- and black people have allowed more of everything else into their shit. Yes. Okay. So how is that? Bec- because because black people getting black people's being nicer doesn't doesn't. So you're saying it got hijacked? No, I'm no, I'm just saying black people being nicer isn't isn't reflective of 
everything, everyone else being less racist. You know what I mean? Hmm. Because 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 it's like we us being better isn't the cure. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like hip, I mean, hip hop has always been because you know what it is. It's kind of like how. You could be a white person before in hip hop. This kind of relates to what we were saying earlier, but you had to be phenomenal. Yeah. Now you can be any. Hip hop has a much lower barrier to entry now because anyone can upload to SoundCloud and mm-hmm. all this. So it's like now you can be white and be trash and rap. So I guess I guess that is progress. <laughs> you can be, but you can be a lot of. You could be any race and be trash, or any race and be good. And be trash and rap. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you always could be black and be trash and be and be good, be on, you mm-hmm. know, or be or be, not trash, but you know, but be not lyrical. Mhm. You know, and now Not like guru. Right. I mean, who's like lyric, you know. Yeah, but now, you know, we letting white kids come in with the mumbling and all of that and it's like, eh, you know, I mean, that's for somebody. It ain't for me. But it's got a good beat. You catch yourself Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I like Bobby. some of the shit. Like I look cuz I look at music like um like food. You know, and like sometimes I feel like a fucking chicken salad and sometimes I feel like junk food. You know what I mean? Like everything is not for you know, nobody's sitting down eating balanced meals every fucking single day, you know. So it's like Yeah. It's like yeah, sometimes I want trash. I want the trash, but it's still trash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I feel like listening to some bullshit. <laughs> Something I don't got to think about, you know, because I spend a lot of time thinking. I know you do. So I, so I have to spend an equal. I have to spend a lot of time doing nothing to like balance out that I, my mind is always going a thousand miles an hour. So let me ask you this, dude. Can you believe we've already been doing this for ninety minutes? Really? <laughs> I know, <laughs> dude. Wow. Okay. Hold on. That's dope, though, because we're just. But I have a couple specific questions. You got a little oh. bit more time? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, hold on. Oh, this is going to be good. And then we got something else. Do you, like, okay, so like, what? What do you define, and this is going to be like a dumb question, so what do you define as a racist person? And I'm not asking you to be the black oracle. What do I? <laughs> <you know. laughs> Brian, the black oracle. Um, no, but uh, a, a racist person is someone that is um, that is unwilling to... Uh, acknowledge and engage with the the things about society that oppress black people or other minorities. You know what I mean? Okay. It's 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 what I said to you earlier. It's the person that is it's the person that cares more about being not racist than they do about ending actual racism, you know? Yes. It's it's just, it's very easy to be comfortable Cause, Cause I put it like this: All you have to do, if you a white person in America, all you got to do to be racist is nothing. Wow. You know, now there's levels to. You can go further than that. You can wow. join the clan. You can, blah, blah, blah. but if you do nothing, you still responsible. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think a lot of people have this attitude: like I didn't do anything, so that's something that's happening over there. And it's like, no, no, you participate because because you benefit from it. You, you know what I'm saying? Dude, dude, you just dropped a jewel. I think you said that in one of your Instagrams. You did a quote from Martin Luther King, and you were talking about the white moderate, and you had that good quote, and I think it was in that same thing. It's the person that doesn't do anything that doesn't help push the agenda forward. Right, right, right. So you're basically saying quietness is complicitness. Yeah. I guess that is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm. Wow. I'm saying that you. I'm, sa- I'm. I mean, I knew that, but with the way you're saying it, because because I always thought racism was like when I talk to comedians and stuff, and it's like, you know, parts of Mississippi. Okay, come on, man. like they don't want to go there. But there's a lot more. That's like the worst extreme example. No, because to me, it's like no. Honestly, racism but, is your is your reflex. It's 
it's because I okay, this is this is a bit I have, mm-hmm. but this is the the setup right. to the bit is, but it's a true story. Yeah, but it's it's oh, a woman was picking me up. Uber, I was I was running late to the store. Uber Uber came to pull to pick me up, and when I went to get in the car, she looked like she was wasn't paying attention. You know what I mean? And she and she looks back when I and I go to I open the door. She looks back and goes oh shit and pulls off. You know what I mean? Like to the point where like the door closes on its own because she fucking skirts off. So you, yeah, because well, you were you weren't in the car. I was not in the car. She she pulled up to pick me up. This is my Uber, and literally got scared, got terrified, and like drove off. Right in Los Angeles. Yeah, in L. A. In twenty twenty. In twenty, this was twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen, but 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 I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? And she circles around the block. And she pulls back up in front of me and goes, uh, you know, I'm going to get back in. And she's like, I'm so sorry. You just never know who will try to get in your car around here. Where's here? This was sun- <laughs> this was like sunset in Normandy, right? So, so Which so, is gentrified. Right. So, so look, the, my, but my point is, my point is her seeing, because, okay, the, hold on, let me get to the point. The punchline to the joke is, or something like, well, the next line is like, actually, bitch, that's that's Uber's whole business model, is they they tell you who's going to get in your car around here, right? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? They they show you a picture, so. Oh shit! But, but, but my point is, she is she would rather like make up some bullshit than to just go. I saw a strange black man get in my car and my, like her reflex was to be afraid of me. That is the racism. And why, right? Hollywood, right? It's because you, and not just white people, black people, everyone grows up in this country and we see shit on TV and it tells you, TV is constantly telling you that black dudes are either athletes or rappers, or someone struggling to get out of the ghetto, or, you know, you you get these caricatures. Because I've met, I've been the only, because that's another thing, living in L.A., a lot of living in L.A. is being the only black person in the room. A lot. You have to give, you have to master that. Well, I think there's so right? many black comics. Yeah, but you ain't always in the room with comics. You know okay. I mean? You know, it's like, it's like. But I, think, I would say L.A. is very diverse. But maybe mm-hmm. I'm ignorant. No, LA, LA as a whole is is very diverse, but but the show show business isn't. Okay, but, I don't want to fuck your yeah, point but, up. But, yeah, but that's that's beside the point. My point is, is that that woman would rather do anything but but admit that that's racism. That like her reaction to me was that way because of her inherent bias, right? And and and. And it's like she, she, her goal was to drive off without me thinking she was racist. Her goal wasn't to drive off and make sure she never does that again. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. And that's, I guess that I guess I hope that answers the question. Yeah. So, like, let's say like this. So, Mark Cuban caught some flack a couple years ago because he was talking about how everybody has some racism in them, and he says a, a black guy walking down the street. His instinct, something, don't quote me with a hoodie or something. He might just go the other way, even though he doesn't know that person. He said something like this. You can look it up. Okay. And they called out Mark saying, you're a racist. He was going, no, I was actually pointing out that how you have to be aware of your own racism to power through it. But the, exactly. the NBA kind of wanted to condone, condemn him, which you're basically saying the NBA is racist for not admitting that that exists. And let's get to the super root. Exactly. Exactly. He was doing, because I don't, I'm not familiar with this story, but. You can look it up. But he was doing exactly what I would prefer. It's like, admit it. Just admit that you, that, because how can you solve, it's like you ever have, you have, you, you ever have old people in your family mm-hmm. that don't want to go to the fucking doctor, mm-hmm. you know? And you like, you like, you know, like dad, you bumping into shit. Dad, you forgetting my name. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Get you scanned, you know, and it's like they, you, you, they just refuse. And it's like he was doing exactly what you would want. It's like who's the person that's, <laughs> who's the person that's never had a racist? Th- I don't trust that motherfucker. 
the the person that the person that's trying to convince yeah. me that they've never been racist, that they've never they've never said the n word, they've never had they've never crossed the street when they saw a black like the people that try to that try to butter you up like that, that's evil. That's an evil person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I stay the fuck away from those people. Those people that try to it's like the it's like the they try to prove how not racist they are. They like make, to the point where it makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's like don't trust those people. No, that's fake. That's fake. Now you hang around. Would you say you hang around mostly black people, mostly white people, everybody? Um, yeah, everybody, pretty much. I mean, I live with. Um, actually, no, I guess, no, I, guess I, I live with three black people. Um, yeah, but mostly. Uh, oh, that's tough to say. I, yeah, I would say about fifty fifty. Yeah. Well, you live with three people. Are they good, by the way? We're about 10 feet. Are they good? Yeah, in terms of the oh, owner. Yeah, they're not working. They're comics. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, comics have been going out the open mics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think they're fine. Okay, good. Do you get tested? I do when I get back in town. Like, I went to... Um, I haven't really been tested in a while. In a while? Yeah. But I don't... This is it. Yeah, man, I don't leave the house unless I'm leaving f- to, for money. Okay. You know, have you been on the road? Not, not like uh, sp- sporadically. You know, I've been on the road. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, then I'm gonna ask you something else. So, are you familiar with Malibu's Most Wanted? <laughs> not really. I mean, you're I, not. I know what it is. Wow, you never saw it. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but it's been years. Okay. I mean, when did that movie? That movie came out in what ninety nine? No, two thousand three. Oh, two thousand yeah. Come on. No, I was in Iraq. Oh, you were. Yeah. Oh, because I was going to get your take on that because, like, the Cleveland show. Are you familiar with the Cleveland show? Uh, a little bit. I never really watched that either. So the white guy who created Cleveland stepped down. Oh. And he's not. He says it should be. It should be a black person. Yes. Okay. And I made Malibu's Most Wanted, and it's about, like, a rapper and all this stuff, or a wannabe rapper. And... Really, the most responsive people to the movie is black people because they get it. It's kind of like an homage to black culture, and it's basically, you know, the saying, they love our rhythm, they hate our blues. Right. So how basically white people take the best part of black culture but don't live through all the other oppressive shit. Right. And that's when the reviews came out. White reviews didn't really get it, but black reviews loved it. But... With the world being the way it is now, with cultural appropriation, which is that's borderline annoying to me. So, wait a minute, so what happened? What, how does the how is the Malibu connected to the Cleveland show? Well, you know, the Cleveland show is is different in the sense that I did an, I did the Cleveland show and I played another character, kind of like B Rad, and the star of the show is Mike Henry, a hilarious guy, great comic, who was Cleveland. He was white. He was doing a black. Uh, he was doing a black character, but he stepped down and, you know, he feels that black people should just do the voice now, which is his, you know, his choice. And what I'm saying is, and Malibu's is a movie based in a part of black culture. There's a lot of black culture in the movie. And I guess why I wanted to get your take is this like, what's the difference between appropriation and appreciation? Because... Uh well well first of all the on the Cleveland show thing what's funny about that is that every black comic in Hollywood got an audition for that, for that. <laughs> so yo they opened it up yeah I I sent in my take <laughs> but because 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 that's the thing is like I don't think because I'm like if it, look if he had talked to me before he stepped down I would have been like don't fucking step down are you stupid. Yeah, which I which I know he didn't step down. You know what I mean? I know he was encouraged okay. to think of alternative. You know what I mean? But it was like he didn't want to leave because that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. You've been Cleveland for at least fifteen years, right? Uh, or, yeah, or longer than that. Or longer. So, um, but the, but the problem with that was the problem with with because it wasn't just the Cleveland show. It was it was a few other things, but the problem is. I, it was, I couldn't do a Cleveland voice because Cleveland sounds like a white man doing an impression of a black man. And black people can't do that voice. Wow. At least I can't. 
I sound like a black man. He sounded like a white man sounding like a black man. Wow. So for me, it was like, I just couldn't do the voice. And they were like, well, if you can't do the voice, do your own voice. I'm like, come on, you're not going to fucking pick a different voice. That doesn't make, that don't make no sense. Oh, well, black, a black guy is doing it. Is he? But does he sound like Cleveland? He does. Okay, that, that's what I mean. I think like spot on. It's, <laughs> but they just kept it going. Oh, yeah. And they just like, put a black dude there. Because like if... But, but but there's no way you go. You're not going to viv us with the voice. No one's ever done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, how, I don't know if you grew up watching Fresh Prince, but out, out of the blue, Aunt Viv was just a different person. Yeah, that happens a few times in different shows. You're right, right, and it's like bewitched. You, the you, husband changed. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you can get away with that with a face, but the voice. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if that's ever been done. If they just like, oh, it's just a different. No, the on Viv thing was very strange. I actually was weirded out by that. But I understand why they did it, but there was no explanation. Oh, well, yeah, but but we just found out recently. Right? Yeah, it was a fight. Yeah, like Will Smith like destroyed her career. And... So, I don't know, but he, but the fact that like she just shows up as a different lady, you had to like jump on the, you know, the, cl- the plausibility train for that. Yeah. But. The voice, you don't, it's still the same character. It's just, it has to be the same voice. So. Well, what they did was they just made her say and do less. Yes. It was like she didn't have to do, on, she didn't have to really be on Viv because she didn't have to do on Viv things. Yeah. Because the, the first on Viv was like this Broadway, classically trained mm-hmm. like actress. So if you, if you remember in the beginning when Will Smith wasn't that great of an actor, a lot of the storylines were based around her. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? So she would she would have these, you know, just great range and all this. But then after they replaced her, the new on Viv didn't really do a lot. Like there was, I don't think there was ever any more episodes that were like about that that centered around her. Mm. You know, so who knows? Who, who knows what it was? But I know that I recently saw Will Smith apologize to her. Yeah, I saw that too. Right, but he didn't give her no money. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck your apology, bro. If you ruin my career, you owe me money, motherfucker. Don't I don't want your your sorries. Oh. Yeah, pay me, pay me. Cause then then we can apologize. Or, or maybe he did. Maybe they did that behind the scenes or something. But Wow. It's like if you cost me money, how you gonna apologize with words? You keeping it. You're keeping it one hundred and one. Yeah. Um so do you think comedy is going to come back the same way or different? Uh, it's going to come back. It's going to come back with a vengeance. And how? Um, I I just think. It, I agree with you, but the gathering part. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to come back with a vengeance because people don't give a fuck about it. people don't care. Because, because here, here's the truth. The truth is because this is why I stopped judging people. When it came to the COVID shit, because first of all, it was like the homie checked me, like in the beginning of the pandemic, you know what I mean? The homie checked me and was like, yo, everybody, everybody can't afford to stay home because they haven't done anything to make sh- they haven't done anything. They gave uh, th- uh, this whole pandemic, I think they gave everybody a total of $1,800. Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's not even rent for some people in that way. No. For one month. No, definitely not. So, so it's like, you can't, it's like, I can't, because I know because I know people that will like, you know, they'll hop on the plane because their mom got sick and then judge you for hopping on a plane to go to a gig. You know what I mean? But it's like, you've just decided that this is where your line is. My line is right here. Mm-hmm. I believe in, I, I'm not a, uh, a, 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 a corona denier. I'm not an anti-masker. I'm not, I'm not any of those things. I be, I'm doing everything I can, but I still got to live. Yeah. So it's like, I stopped judging people um, in that regard, and and I think I think everyone's line is getting even the most staunch people, their line is getting smaller and smaller. Like their tolerance yeah, to dude. stay in the house because because say this goes on, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that everyone has a point in the future where they're going to say fuck this. I'm going outside. You know what I mean? Yep. For some people, it was six months ago. <laughs> yep. Right? Yep. For other people, it's a year and a half from now. But it's like, there is a point where you're going to go, I'm not staying in the fucking house anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? And and so, 
You can't judge. I, mean, I guess you can. You can judge people. For that, Huntington Beach, it was the first Taco Tuesday they missed. <laughs> for, right. Okay. Right. But, I mean, you, you can judge people that right at the beginning was like, I'm not for trying Karen's, to For Karen's, it's the whole food that she goes to. You yeah. know, now for people like me, I'm like, yo, we're 10 and a half and change here. And, you know, I'm seeing small businesses not being able to fucking serve a slice, but I see a huge movie production across the street. Exactly. So it's like, mm. so yeah, you're saying, hey, man, you got to fucking live and you got to do your thing. So you're not going to judge them. I'm I'm just not, I'm not going to have strong feelings about it. Like, I'm, if you ask me what I think, I'm going to tell you what I think, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stop somebody in the middle of the street and go, hey, motherfucker, you know, what I'm just going to cross the street. Yes. Yeah. Because, because like, I, I don't. I don't get to I don't get to decide where that line is for you. Now maybe maybe there's more nuance there. Like I think maybe in, right in the beginning when we ain't know shit about shit and it was like let's everyone stay in the house and mask up till we figure this shit out. Maybe you could judge people then for just not giving a fuck, but you can't judge people for the line that they've drawn for themselves and their family. You know what I mean? Because you do have a line. You have a reason that you'll leave here and get on a plane. Yeah. You mean or get on a train or walk somewhere? You know. And so what do you who who the fuck are you to tell other people what their reasons are? Exactly. I mean, like, I don't want to get on a plane, but I mean, maybe if the offer was right. Man, it's awful. It's terrifying. Yeah, I don't want to fucking do that. Yeah, yeah. I drive, maybe, but I don't want to perform inside a club right now. No, no. Um, but no, I um I did a gig a few months ago and it was like they, you know, they put in they put in this like New filtration, this triple filtration system, and they had everybody insta tested at the door, and you know they went through it, and they paid me a nice amount, and they went through a lot of trouble to make sure everything was on the up and up. And if you do that, I'll go. You know what I mean? I, I can't go do a gig like somewhere where they're like, "Fuck COVID." What nah. is that? It's a hoax. I can't. Go, I can't do that. Were you the headliner? Um, no, it was like it was like there was actually three of us and we all did twenty. What what state? It was Montana. Okay. Yeah, it was a ski it was a ski town in Montana. Um, and you did you did how many shows? Uh, well, we <laughs> we were originally scheduled for six shows, but we only I only ended up doing two. Yeah, because but that's cool. Well, yeah, they got the the airport got like snowed out or like. Cause up there they get weird weather sometimes, and they got like they, once in a lifetime. Was it Bozeman? It was Bozeman. That that was the airport I flew into was Bozeman, but it was like it got fro they got frozen fog on the ground, and they didn't let any planes land because you couldn't see more than five feet or something. Yeah, that's that, I love performing up there. Yeah, it was nice. And I mean, that's probably a cleaner environment. Yeah, and they treat you good. They treat you good, and, and I think they before I went there, I think they'd only had a hundred cases of COVID or something like like it had gone through some shit. It had gone down from the from you know the previous weeks to like a hundred and some. Yeah, but you bet you about to stymie that cough. Bro. No, but like I said, like I said, I had to make money. I've been I've I've been in the house this whole pandemic. Yeah, living off living off my savings. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's like I can't keep I can't do that indefinitely. Yeah, no, you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> yeah, man. So it's like I don't want to be. I don't want to have to leave. But but anyway, when this is all over with. People are starving. A thousand percent. I'm just wondering how close people are going to be allowed and all this stuff. And I don't think people think, oh, in the summertime. No, it's not going to happen. Um, nah, it ain't going to happen that easy. No, nah, once that vaccine get out there, people want people want to treat it like the flu, like Dude, flu season. 50% of the people don't want the vaccine. But, but, and I got to be careful to not say that <laughs> because you get banned. Bro, yeah. you want the vax? I, man, I want them. I want them to load that shit into a shotgun and blast me with it. That's interesting. As someone yeah. who's worked for our government, who has inside knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Well, because I mean, listen. I know there's a nine lot of, months of testing, dude. There's a lot of conspiracy. Takes fifteen years, generally. Nine months, bro. Yeah, but we. Ain't, I ain't got fifteen years. I know, but what I'm saying is, like, my sister got it. She's on the front lines, but that's a person that like comes out of a burning building and goes, you see that? That's crazy. Like nothing's going to take her down, but like it's, I mean, she, she like, got both her shots. She did one. Oh, okay. And she's been texting me. She's like, I'm fine, but that's her. And she's like an iron woman. Yeah. I mean, cause I, I, I know the risks, you know what I mean? But, but, but the, do you, do you believe any of the conspiracies? No, I don't believe nothing. Any of the nothing. Cons- any of the conspiracies? Yeah. Do you know what they are? Okay. Well, break them down for me. 
Okay, how can I say this without getting in trouble? Because you get in trouble, they they look for words. <laughs> I'm serious. So there is a conspiracy. There is here, here, a, here's, here's there's a, an alternative. You can't be in trouble. You can't be in trouble if you keep it real. No, you can. Here's why. Even YouTube now can take your paper away. So the only the only real free speech is hosting a website off a Scandinavian server platform. <laughs> I'm serious. They're the only server that won't, I looked into it, that won't cancel you. But dude, you see people are getting canceled, bro. You've thrown off the internet. So I mean, I've only seen that happen to Trump. Dude, there's tons of people being deplatformed all over, bro. Off all platforms? All, dude, people are getting thrown off of Patreon. People are getting thrown off of LinkedIn. People are getting thrown off of PayPal, bro. <laughs> bro. Okay, all right, all right. It's fucking, you still got to play within the system. I mean, yeah, you're right. it's crazy. So, and that they, because they say this information is not true, and they have the big book of facts, <laughs> right? right? So the critical thinking, I agree with you in the streets, Keep it real. The respect is there, but it's the streets paying the bills. Literally, the only way you can't get canceled is if you can get your message out to people and they'll show up anywhere you want and you sell 500 tickets and everybody knows where Brian's going to be. That is the true power of non-cancellation, the audience sticking with you. But how do you get the message to the audience when people are getting canceled? There's a lot of, you can look into this. Hmm. So my thing is with this stuff, what you're saying is, Okay, there's one theory that I'm going to call it something else, that this thing they're talking about giving you could make you sterile. Do you believe that? No. Why not? There's no evidence. There's no evidence that it just started. Yeah, I know, but, but I mean, see, the people that start, the people that start conspiracy do theories. You believe we're, do you believe we're at full capacity on the earth? That the earth is at full capacity? I don't think so because there's no. a lot of people that have a lot of land and there's a lot of people <laughs> stacked up and they can spread it out and people will all have a nice yeah, no, chunk. No, no, no. I don't think there's but a do you, But do you hear those theories all the time that we're at fucking overpopulated? You've heard that term. I've heard that term, but I haven't heard anyone say that we're there. I've heard people say we're, we will be there soon. All right. There's a, there's a lot of there, we're there. Okay. That's what the climate crisis is saying. So, okay, you don't think that is uh, truthful at all. No, I don't. I don't have no evidence for that. You know, I just have because because you got to understand every conspiracy, every conspiracy theory that I that you ever hear. It started with a mistrust that existed before the theory came to be. So it's like you don't trust the government, which is why you're you're susceptible to believe these things, right? Because there, no one's ever shown me something that's saying. You know, it, it's not like some defector scientist has come oh, out and been like, they okay. wanted me to cover this up, but it no, shrinks your balls. You know what I mean? No, but there has been. You just have to go deep down the rabbit hole. Uh, but, okay, let me ask you okay. this. Where does the mistrust come from? Oh, because they lie. Out of the air? No, no, no. You, no. you have every right to be suspicious of the government. Uh, I mean, Or anything. Yeah, as am I. I'm suspicious of them, too. But I'm also weary of people... That use my to try to use my suspicion against me, you know, because because it's it's levels to the shit, right? Like like Alex Jones is the king conspiracy theorist, right? But then there's but then there's a conspiracy that he is part of a conspiracy to make conspiracy theorists look crazy. A psyop, right? He's yeah. a he's a he's a false living false flag. Yeah, or so so it's like, I mean, they all out there and I entertain them, but at the same time, it's like. Everything the vaccine could do to you, COVID could do to you. How do you know? Because there's evidence of that. You know what I mean? There's not only like records being kept, but there's also people that that are you know that have had it and had the things happen to them, like long term effects of COVID. You know, so it's like I Dude. to me when I weigh the difference, I'm like I, I'm gonna try that vaccine, dog. I'm not saying you shouldn't and you can do whatever you want, but I'm saying well, we're on two different subjects. But you know, Hank Aaron just passed. And they say it was because they didn't put it. It was the vaccine, but a lot of people say it was. That the got, vaccine killed him? Dude, He two weeks later, he's dead. I mean, yeah, but... And he got a shot to, sh- like, encourage the people to do it. I'm willing to take that risk, bro. You know, listen. No, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Viagra can make you blind. Did you know that? No, but I don't doubt it. Viagra, Viagra can make you go blind. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a very, very small percentage of people, right? But the second my dick isn't at 100%, 
I'm making Viagra smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm willing to roll the dice, man. I'm, you know. I know. I'm not saying you shouldn't or not. I'm just saying is what do you believe? Are you entertaining? Are you willing to entertain an outside thought? So, do you know what? Um, oh fuck! You know what nanotechnology is? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe that there could be? There's another theory. There could be nanotechnology to kind of straight up be inside of. The vaccine. Well, that's definitely possible. Okay. But here's the thing: the t- the pe- the sort of people that would benefit from that kind of thing, there are way more efficient ways to get that in you. They, you know, they could just put it in the water supply. You know, I mean, there's way more. There's way. It's, there's way more. That's a good. Al- that's a very good alternative theory, right there. Well, well I just mean there's more efficient ways to c- commit this sort of conspiracy, like. Um, you know, it's like I got a friend that's like real big on the chemtrails thing, but it's like, but I'm like, the politicians breathe in that same air though. You know what I mean? So it's like, why would they put shit in the air if they got to breathe? I don't know, but 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 the you know the I'm I just want to uh, to go outside and like look. Don't get me wrong. If I saw something from a reputable source that was like the vaccine is dangerous, and it probably is. It's in year in some years we gonna find out. I know. Yeah, yeah, but I'm willing to roll the dice. You are, yeah, because 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 again, what if what if the vaccine? What I don't if, think it's bad that you're saying this. I'm just, now I'm more on a conspiracy thing of like because you're such an open minded person. When you said they started as a mistrust, and I go and why did that mistrust come from? Some of the most fucked up things that have happened in this world have started as a conspiracy theory, and I fucking hate oh, yeah. that people get. They just dismiss shit. I mean, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. Epstein started as a conspiracy theory. Um, Hold on, but before he died, I mean, before he was arrested, dude, he's it's, it, that story's been around for twenty years. That Epstein has an island, or all that, there, that shit. Or that there was okay, okay. And do you know the, the, the Tuskegee, not Airmen? Do you know about the Tuskegee experiment? I just had another person yeah. where they gave there's X a, amount of black people syphilis. There's a movie about it called Miss Evers Boys. Exactly. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, um, that was fucking real. Yeah, that definitely fucking happened. So you know what I'm saying? MK Ultra. You know about that? Yeah. I mean, that is real. Co- so, Cointel Pro is real. Yes. Yeah, so there's. But see, but, but think so about. So there's our four things that started out as you're crazy. No, but to look, now real. But look though, Cointel Pro. What is that one? That was that was when the F, when the FBI was trying to infiltrate, uh, like the Black Panther. Martin and, Luther King. Right. And, and they tried to expose his personal well, life, but also like the Black Panthers and the and the Crips, and and what they what they were doing was, <laughs> they were convincing, they they were infiltrating these groups and trying to convince each group that there was conspiracy against them from the other group, dude. So it was like that's what I mean is it's like there, yeah these there's conspiracies and there's possibilities, but then there's also it's like. It's almost like, it's like if I know how you're going to react, I can control your your action. But what, what I'm saying is you, but okay, the crack game, really quick before I forget, Rick Ross, okay. yes or no? Because you already you already posted about the poppy fields. So oh, okay, you lost me. Okay, Rick Ross, freeway to Rick Ross. There's always that theory that the government was putting crack in the inner cities. Yes oh, okay, no? okay, okay, okay. Yes or no? Yes, a thousand percent. Yeah. Right? I mean, why is every liquor store... I mean, Boys in the Hood was a documentary, dude. You agree with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a one-time conspiracy. It's not proven to this day. They think this crack just happened naturally. Didn't they they admit it, though? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I think they admitted it. But that was a conspiracy. Right. And do you... So the poppy fields is what in Afghanistan is that there's there's a group of soldiers always in these poppy fields guarding the poppy fields and that the government is somehow involved... In the heroin trade, do you believe that? Oh, see, I, never, I think you posted that. I never heard. No, 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 I never heard that. But I wouldn't be surprised. Then, dude, there's six theories that are crazy that you're all believed yeah, in. But, so you believe in this? No, no, no. I'm not saying that no conspiracy is ever. I hate correct. that that's the word conspiracy, though. Yeah, because I, I think that word is is overused. It's right. It's overused. It's not really well defined. But you know any. The two of us could be conspiring, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, this the world runs on conspiracies, conspiracies, right? But it's mm-hmm. like conspiracies. But there's like, but there's a there's a 
there's a levels. You know what I mean? There's things that like actually happened, and then there's things that pr- are probably true, and then there's shit that is crazy than the motherfucker, and then there's shit that is like, <laughs> bro, you need to get back on your meds. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. That. And so I'm just I'm 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 terrified of being in this category. You know, I'm terrified of being in the very crazy world. So, and, and, and maybe more, you know, maybe there is shit I'm overlooking in, in the process. All I want to say is this, is that, and then I got one more thing and I'm going to let you go because I know you're busy, but I can't forget this. See, the genie is out of the bottle. Okay. So, the internet... When it started, the internet started in the seventies, and it was a it was a government project, okay. and it was a way, literally, for a computer to talk to another computer, and it was a military op. And in the nineties, literally in our own country, right here in our backyard, up in Stanford and Berkeley, they started going, okay, we can implement this. It was a scholastic thing mm. where schools could talk to each other and share papers. And then, hence, boom, those guys were like, this could be used for fucking selling fucking toilet paper. And boom, the internet was born. With that. That's when Jeff Jeff Bezos started working harder than all of us. Yeah, right? So, all of that borns basically the fourth industrial revolution, which is insanity. Or maybe it was the third, and the fourth is coming out with AI. So, you have this new revolution. AI is terrifying. Well, okay, we can talk about that. But so it's, it's, hold that thought. So we have this new thing. And with it, the genie is, right? So it's what's happening right now as we speak. Are you familiar with the whole GameStop thing? No, no. I, I mean, I woke up this morning. It was everywhere. But So the GameStop is a brilliant thing that happens. So basically a bunch of gamers, which is the hardcore community on the internet, they go deep in Reddit. They're called the fucking floor lords, I think. And basically trading floor. Millions of guys got together and they got their stimmies, right? Okay. But it's like how powerful is 10 million people with 600 bucks? And so they started piling in the stocks that were highly shorted. So they like GameStop, but also GameStop was so shorted that in order to do a short, it's hard to explain, but basically when the shorter is getting fucked, they have to buy more stock to get out. And by doing that, it makes the price go up. They fucking gamified the system and fucking the stock went from five dollars to three fifty in about a week. It's insane. And the Wall Street is losing its fucking mind. But the fucking So 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 what you're saying is they purposely game the system not to make money, but to fuck over the people that are trying to make money on people losing money. Cause that's what a short they, is, right? Yes. No, they 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 went over there to fuck. The, it was a three prong system, I believe. A, they love GameStop, and they're like, "How dare you shit on this fucking company?" There's gamers that love GameStop. They love GameStop. Okay, that's a whole other thing. B, they fucking went in and said, "Uh, fuck you. You're like Wall Street." So it was like the new Occupy Wall Street with actual effects. Mm. They occupied it, and C. They made money in the process. They one guy made millions, right? So they you're able to rig the system. If you have enough people on one side and you put it, you say five million people get together, and we're all going to buy this. Forget it. So they're doing it with AMC right now. A movie theater in a pandemic was up two hundred one percent today. It's insane. So that is like a new form of power, like we've never seen, right? And it's the internet. So what are we living in the internet? What we're saying is why I believe all the S T the CTs, because you can't say that word, conspiracy theories are happening is because information is dismantled and dispersed everywhere. And maybe out of the corner of the internet, somebody's saying something that they could never get their voice heard and it kind of creeps out. And then there might be a little bit of truth to it. So that's why I don't think it's ever going to stop. It's only going to get bigger. No. Oh, conspiracy theories? All, all of because information is not yeah. going to stop. People are sharing their stories and they can share it anonymously. It's never stopped. It's, it, it's I feel always, like it's bigger than it's been in the, my whole life in no, the last year. No, that's not true. And I and I and I can tell you why I can. T- <laughs> it's it's funny because I was listening to a podcast on the way over here about conspiratorial thinking. Wow. Okay. And it's in and, and the guy was talking exactly about that about how it seems like that it's more 
now yes. than there's ever been, but he's like, it's the same as it's always been. It just depends on who's president and who is this guy and who how, made him the boss and how personal no he's just someone that studied it he, this is his theory he, he doesn't know anything it's his theory but he's saying that like that that not all conspiracies are political that like no. so so i think i think right now because the country is so divided politically there's more conspiracy p- political conspiracy so people think there's more conspiracies but even in the quietest most peaceful times conspiracies run rampant because people don't trust the government you know, it's like one of the ones they brought up was the Kennedy assassination, right? And it's how it's it's like he was all the evidence says he was killed by one man, one dude, one dude killed the most powerful man in the world with no help or anything, no prior planning, no nothing, right? And and they want you to believe that that's the official story, but the documents have been sealed for like 70 years. Exactly. So right there is a right. red fucking flag. Exactly. But, and that's, but, but what I'm saying is once you, once you build up enough mistrust, every theory seems plausible. Right. Yes. You, you know, I've heard the saying you find what you're looking for. Yeah. So it's like, once you, once you hit a point where like, cause I don't know any, I don't know any conspiracy theorists that believe just one It's like Pringles. <laughs> right. Can't. Once you get once you once you get the one, <laughs> got then you're like, hey man, it's another <laughs> motherfucker over here. And, and you get the barbecue Pringle, the sour cream yeah, Pringle. Like I can't imagine being that dude that remember the pizza because uh, they they're fascinating to me. Remember the Pizza Gate thing? Oh yeah. Okay, so you remember the, so the, the I'm gonna for, have to edit that out. You can't even say that. They'll block this video. Really? Yeah. It's okay. Crazy. So there were politicians. There were people that believed that politicians had a secret. Yeah. A uh, pedo ring. Mm. Can I say that? No, but oh. okay. Uh, had a secret ring where yeah. they were hurting children. Yeah. That were based in the basement of a pizza parlor. Yeah. And this guy ran up in the pizza parlor, armed to the teeth. Yeah. Burst through a door that he thought led to a secret lair, and he he was standing in the broom closet. Yeah. And he got arrested, but I can't imagine because he was certain. It, you know, and may, and the thing is, maybe. He just didn't move the right broomstick to like open the wall up. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> because that would have to be his next. He would because ha- otherwise you're sitting in prison like yo. Did I just throw my whole life away on some bullshit? Yeah. No, that broom closet was a secret. It had because that's the only thing that I can believe and maintain my sanity. I just missed. I missed the lever. I missed the switch. Yeah. Yeah. That was not a closet full of brooms. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. What I'm just saying, though, is that all of this stuff, I just say sometimes, a lot more times than that, there's, where there's smoke. There's fire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, I would never go so far as to defend. You're a smart guy. Let me ask you this. Did you ever see the Biden sniffing kids video? <laughs> and I got to be careful fucking saying this. <laughs> no. Bro, what, what, what the fuck are you do in your apartment all day? No, You're so smart. That was mainstream. you never seen Biden? No. Go home and watch our president for 12 minutes. Sniff children? Oh, yeah. Dude, how do you not know this? You're so smart. I mean, but wait a minute. What do you mean sniffing children? Like, you mean... Hey, bring her over here. Come here. Now, let me take the picture by myself. Get <laughs> like... Every he's being as like a borderline grandpa. Like he's like he's savoring that new baby smell because babies smell great. I, it's just it's 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 you just I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, you should watch it <laughs> and text me your opinion of it. Write that down, bro. Uh, I can't believe you're not aware of this, right bro. Now. You've been living in a fuck. How much weed you smoke? Make a note to watch Biden sniffing children. You didn't hear that from me. Oh man. The last thing I'm gonna ask you is this. Cancel culture. Okay. You're uh, thinking about that, aren't you? I'm just trying to picture it, but go ahead, go ahead. Uh, ca- cancel culture, what about it? Do you think that it's right? Do I think that it's right? Do we live in a society, I believe, that we're, we're not even in cancel culture anymore, we're in a race culture. I think it's inevitable. Inevitable, but, but, but you can't make a mistake anymore. I don't think that's true. I think I think it feels that way, but like I was trying to say to you earlier, I I think that if you 
if you if you can if you're genuine and you own up to what you said, then I don't think you can be canceled. And I and I see that from evidence, you know, of of of, of certain because certain people get accused of certain stuff and it bounces off them. Yeah, it's true. And certain people get accused of certain stuff and they crumble, right? Yes. And usually, Bill Cosby is a perfect example. He didn't go down so hard and so fast because of what he did. He went down so hard and so fast because it was so contrary to how he presented himself. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Really good point. It's like, perfect example, um, around the time of the... It wasn't a 180. That was like a 720. Right, exactly. And so recently we've had... So around the time of the the, the, the Leah stuff, Mm. you know... All of that went down, but then at the same time, somebody said something about Joey Diaz to try to bring up his shit. But the difference is, Dalia disappeared, and Joey Diaz was like, "Man, I've been said that shit." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was a horrible person, and moving on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And nothing. So, so my thing is, I f- I feel like as long as long as you didn't do anything fucked up, that like unforgivable, then I feel like you can get away with saying whatever as long as you speaking from a. You know, speaking from the heart. Like, as long as you... But, I, I... Yeah, you have to own it. If you present a true... Like, I try to say this. I never write anything, even in a text, that I wouldn't say in public. Because I believe we're all being... Oh, yeah, that's tough. Because to be I, I, I fuck, I've made that mistake before where I'm like, why do I... Why am I not texting this person? Yeah. But, but, but honestly... What I'm saying is, though, is that we live in a time where... Do you believe an accusation of anything... Is now fact, and that's what's fucking crazy. But that's, but that's only because look, think about everyone that's been completely canceled. It's because they they've given those people power over them. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you, it, you know, it's like if how many times have you seen people do this? They come out with some kind of heartfelt apology, and then what, what's the next thing people say is. That wasn't even a good apology. Yeah, you know. So it's like, and now, and now, but now you've shown you've shown this group of people that they can bring you. To, because here's the deal: it's about power. It is about power because no one, everyone knows from the time he was a little kid. Everyone knows that a forced apology ain't a real apology. Mm-hmm. How many times your mama say apologize? <laughs> I'm sorry that I punched you, even though you stole my cheeses, mm. right or whatever. It's like, it's like <laughs> fuck you. Cause you're, the whole time you're apologizing, you're making it known that like I don't mean this. Yes, you know what I mean. And so, if you force a person to apologize, it's you know it's not a real apology, but you still want it, right? And so, ask yourself that: Why do you need an apology? Why did you get up in the morning and go searching the internet for something to piss you off? And then demand an apology from somebody. It's like, why do you need that? It's it's a power thing. And it's like, I refuse to give you that power over me. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, be mad about it, motherfucker. But I, I wouldn't disappear or none of that shit. It's like I'm kind. Of, I'll I'll have a discussion with you. I'll do all that. But I'm not gonna like apologize to somebody that I didn't do anything to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, because it, it makes it it make because there's a there's a network of like bloggers and shit like that and they retweet each other and blo- and it makes it seem like it's like these all these thousands of millions of people and it's not no it's the same it's the same motherfuckers you know how it was always one bitch in the neighborhood that's always looking out the window always peeking through the blinds mm-hmm. you know what i mean or you know the, cause <laughs> yeah. we, we, we had we had a neighbor like that i ain't gonna say her name yeah. she, but, but we had a neighbor like that was like it was like how the fuck grandma know what the fuck? We, how she know that I was out the house? Yeah. She in Atlantic City. How she call the house and say, get, go back in the house? Right? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's because fucking Miss Davis is over there being fucking nosy. Yeah. And it's like, but now those people have groups. And they have groups that it, it's no different than like, um, like, um, you know, like people that like to like kidnap people and, and skin them and shit. And it's like now they have wives. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And they have they have subreddits, you know, so it's like they get to belong to a community and they ho- they all just get off on eating people up and, and, and they get to disguise it as activism. It's it's narcissism dressed up as activism. And so they get they get to disguise their narcissism, but nothing worse than a narcissist with a cause. You know what I mean? Wow. And that's all it really is. It's like I refuse to be- now listen, if I legitimately hurt a motherfucker. I'm I'm willing to apologize. I'm not one of those people that's like I never say sorry, you know. But 
But uh, but bitch, you don't know me. You woke up yesterday and and went to read something that I wrote five years ago, just so you could get mad. Mm-hmm. It's like you. That's your problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you addicted to punishment. Some kind of you know mask, sado mask. I don't know what it is. Narcissism dressed up as activism. Yeah. That's fucking. You got to recognize that shit when you see it, man, because it's a lot of people in the. Would you say most cancel culture is that? Mm. Ooh. A lot. I mean, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it is that. It's it's just community. It's it's when people when people don't power power corrupts, you know. So it's like, especially when people ain't, you know, power's like money. You know what I'm saying? You you see a motherfucker that ain't never had money, get money all of a sudden, mm-hmm. it ruins them. Mm-hmm. Same thing. A motherfucker that ain't never had power before, they go crazy. And it's the same thing. It's it's, it's the opposite too. People that have always had money or power and then and all of a sudden don't, they can't survive. You know what I mean? And and so anyway, my point is, this is a whole swath of people that has never had power. They've never definitely never had the power to destroy someone, <laughs> you know, or to destroy someone's career, you know, or or, or whatever. So and now they do, you know, and. It's gonna always be out there, but it's like I, I just refuse to give those people power. That's why I don't. I'm not gonna interact with you. I'm not gonna apologize to you. I mean, not that, I, and I don't think I say anything truly all that controversial. But I'm saying what I really think. Yeah, you know, which and I'm I'm always open to new information. People trying to change my mind. I'm I'm always open to that. But but uh, but all of these people like just wake up every day and go. Oh, you know what's trending? Who's who's mad at? Who are we mad at today? You see tweets like that. Yeah. Who we mad at today? It's like what? You don't got nothing else to do. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Who are we mad at? <laughs> How you get mad as a group? It's so fucking true, dude. It's yeah, that's... the beehive. They don't survive without the hive. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. But hold on. But let's to clarify, we are not talking about Beyonce, Beyonce fans. Never. No, we never. We no, we love that. Beyonce. Yeah, I don't know. That's that is the one group I'm afraid of. Yeah, dude. If they come for your neck, bro, it's a wrap. I don't yeah. do not do not talk shit about Beyonce. I'd rather talk about the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you, dude. Yeah, don't talk shit. Well, what can you say about her though? She nothing. She's she would say she's PC'd up anyway. <laughs> dude, that was. I can't even tell you how long this has been. It's probably been like two hours. Oh since my time. god, dude! Yeah. It's just been a little over two hours. Break it up into two episodes. <laughs> Fucking great. Take a vacation. Hit them with your dude. I appreciate this, man. I really do. I, and it was great getting your. I just wanted to pick your brain. And um, your editor's gonna have a hard time. <laughs> we had to take out a couple things. <laughs> no, literally, they'll run the fucking AI, man. That's fucked up. And like demonetize it. Oh yeah. So you want to hit them? Tell them. Tell them what. What are you working on? Hit them with your socials. And um, do you have a pod? I do. What's it called? It's called BS with Brian Simpson. And is it just you? It's just me. And you always have your rant. Right. I mean, a lot of the stuff I've said here, I've said there before. How many episodes deep are you? (sighs) I think I just did 54. BS with Brian Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just me ranting about, I'm going to start having guests um, soon, but yeah, I've only only had a couple of guests because I do it. I do it all myself. I know. I feel like that. I like to get a lot of solo, but then sometimes I just get sick of, like, and I'm like, I need to bounce stuff. I didn't even know you did this. How many episodes are you deep in this? This is 26. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But it's been, I'm just starting. I mean, it's, it was on and off for like two years. It's a lot of fucking work, dude. It is, yeah. But I do believe that this is the new welcome mat. This is the new Twitter. You got to have it. Yeah, it's it's a net. It's a net to catch fans that like go by you. 100%. Even if, if I can just do this, you know, you heard about Chris Rock when he did his first special, why he said he did it. No. Oh, it's the greatest line in comedy where he said, I just wanted to make something that was, that was, that penetrated enough so I wouldn't have to do morning radio. <laughs> so, man, I mean, and he makes end up one of the best specials of all time. But it's like, this is what this is. If I, if everything goes to shit and I could sell 80 tickets a night off of this, I'm living. Yeah. And, and I feel like it's a good way to come up with bits and stuff. Around this. 100%. Yeah. So your so hit them with your socials. Uh, all my socials are BS Comedian. Okay. Is, uh, all the places. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, and Facebook. Uh, 
Um, no, I, I, I deactivated my Facebook a couple months ago because of all the stuff that you don't believe in. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I had, it was just because I didn't want to keep up with that many. Okay, um, but it, I might bring it back. I don't know. But then, then the the podcast is BS with Brian Simpson. That's on all platforms. Okay, and uh, and uh, that's about it. No, I'm working. I can't say what I'm working on. Yeah. Really? That's good then. All right. Dude, great talking to you, man. Go check him out, guys. This was a marathon. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I loved it, man. Thank you.